Colin Aranow. And listen, I wouldn't have brought this up if it wasn't juicy, okay? It is juicy. So she was arrested on charges of simple assault, simple battery, right. trespassing. After members of the police arrived at the scene, the establishment's owner told officers about the 31-year-old's alleged interactions with three of his employees, uh, bouncers Ian O'Neill and Jacinto Hills, as well as bartender Haley Cawley. Security footage showed Alea forcing her way into the locked employee bathroom despite being told to use the public restroom next to it. According to the bartender, the employee bathroom... Uh, in the employee bathroom, Alea told her she needed to change her tampon and ask for a few minutes, which she was granted. A few minutes later, when Ms. Cauley again entered the restroom, the female removed her tampon and threw it at oh Ms. Cauley. Man, what is that the... is that in lieu of darts in that place? or This is when security stepped in and removed the female from the club. Wow. Uh, she was then uh, escorted from the building by two bouncers. Uh, she can be seen uh, fighting and resisting the entire way outside. The video clearly shows Miss Arenal grabbing and pulling Mr. O'Neill's hair and her hitting Mr. Hills in the genitals. <laughs> Meanwhile, Leia shared a different side of the story with police. The uh, better side. According to the report, it said Miss Arenal stated she was uh, forcefully removed from the club. She initially denied forcing her way into the bathroom, only stating she needed to use the restroom to throw up and change her tampon. It's a great night out. Uh, uh, she also yeah. initially denied throwing her used tampon as Miss Cauley uh, at Miss Cauley, but later stated that she did throw her used tampon. She did throw her used tampon, so mm -hmm. it was what a night of vomiting and tampon changing. Mm -hmm. Who the hell does that? When confronted about her pulling Mr. O'Neill's hair out and hitting Mr. Hill in the genitals, uh, the report read Mrs. Arenauer attempted to justify her actions, stating that she was <gasps> defending herself. This is the kind of girl yeah. you go know, like years ago. You go out on a date with, and you'd realize this woman's going to get me into a fist uh, fight by the end of this uh, evening. Yep. What'd so, you do with that tampon? So she's charged of uh, simple assault, simple battery, and okay. uh, criminal trespass. The hell with you. Right, we'll Good luck, you. sweetie. <laughs> yep. Victoria Beckham's show at Paris Fashion Week was disrupted by animal rights activists who joined her models on the catwalk. Uh, people for the Ethical Treatment of Animals group said that it was a protest against the use of animal skins in the fashion industry in general. The demonstrators wore T-shirts that read, Animals aren't fabric, and waved signs saying, Viva Vegan Leather. Uh, Victoria appeared on crutches at the show's finale as she had a foot injury. Uh, she was wearing a black protective boot on her left foot to match her all-black outfit, and despite her lack of mobility, she did walk the... Uh, past fashion fans and critics in the front row. She paused briefly to blow a kiss to someone in the crowd and mouth, thank you. While her fashion brand does not use fur or exotic skins, uh, PETA points out that some designers use leather. Okay. Some do. Some. So we're going so we're after, gonna her. Go after her. Well, I think what worked against her is that she was actually wearing hollowed out kittens on her feet. Oh, uh, yeah. They, don't, they can't look past <laughs> and that. And that, 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 they found that a bridge too far. Uh, the show in Paris was showcasing the Spice Girls singers Autumn Winter 2024 collection. Uh, David Beckham said on Instagram last month that Victoria had hurt her foot during a little accident in the gym. So I don't know any more than that about what happened to her foot. Actor Mark Dodson, who lent his voice to many beloved sci-fi and video game characters, has died. He was uh, 64 years old. The Star Wars Episode Seven: The Force Awakens actor, was in Evansville, Indiana for Horror Con when he suffered a massive heart oh, attack. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. And he was well known in the industry for his ability to create multiple characters with his voice. His first big role was as Salacious Crumb. You have it? <laughs> That's him. Uh. As Salacious Crumb <laughs> in uh, Return of the Jedi and later for Ewoks in Ewoks The Battle for Endor. Uh, Dodson said that he was inspired to get into show business after attending a Charlie Chaplin film festival when he was a child. He said he could make me laugh and cry all in the same movie. But he made uh, his own movies in his teens and moved to California in 1978. Uh, he was able to get in with Lucasfilm two years later and began as a carpenter helping to construct Skywalker Ranch uh, with the intent of moving into film production when the project was finished. He went on to provide the voices as well of several of the characters in the 1984 film Gremlins. Yeah, and a lot of work in that. When asked about that, he said, it's easier to tell you who I didn't uh, portray in Gremlins. He said, I didn't do Stripe and I didn't do Gizmo. Aww. But I'm the majority of all of the rest of the Gremlins. And Gremlins won everybody from the fan Gremlin to the 
Caroling Gremlins to the Gremlins in the theater to the Gremlin on Santa Claus. I am most of them, he said. So this guy's kind of like a, uh, a was sort of like a Mel Blanc type all-purpose voiceover artist. Uh, he said it was all improvising. You can't really script what a Gremlin says. We would just try stuff. And basically, if we got a laugh from the people and the crew and the other actors, I was there with <laughs> Howie Mandel and Frank Welker. And it was like, okay, good. Let's move on to the next Gremlin. Uh, Dodson provided some of the sounds. Uh, for zombies, <coughs> excuse me, in Day of the Dead, by the way. I think, was uh, was Howie Mandel the voice of uh, Gizmo? I think he might have been, yeah. Was. I think that was his deal. Yeah, so, uh, but unfortunately, died of a heart attack, 64 years old, and at a, at a convention. That's sad news there. Uh, former football player Cam Newton. I don't yes. know if you saw this, Casey. Oh, dude, yeah, him, yes. Apologized for his role in a scuffle at a seven-on-seven <laughs> seven youth football tournament oh, over the weekend. Geez. It was so, a it was a full melee. Yeah, so I don't know um, what... His uh, culpability was, but it looked like he was just defending himself. They got into a fight yeah. over who voiced the gremlins. Oh, and, um, and he was like, it was yeah. Howie Mandel! Was, yeah. Howie Mandel, bitch! <laughs> he said there was no excuse wow. for his actions. Uh, video from the Atlanta, uh, Atlanta tournament surfaced he Sunday. He did gizmo! Uh, that showed Newton being shoved by three people near the top of a set of steps before the pushing, shoving, and grabbing <laughs> moved toward the fence line. The video lasted less than 30 seconds before the altercation was broken up by police. Uh, and event security personnel. Do you have the story as to how it started? Because I have no idea how it started. No, I just have his apology. That's okay. it. Uh, he said uh, he let his emotions get the best of him. Uh, he said it should not uh, it should not have been called for. Simple. And with that, I apologize to anybody affected. Uh, he named the event organizers, players, and parents among those that he was issuing his apology oh to. God. I know. But listen, no matter what, and I can't stand this, and, I, and I'm, I'm glad that this stuff doesn't end up on my feed on Twitter, but sometimes it does. But like... Attacking somebody who's already uh, engaged in, in a in a kerfuffle is a bitch ass move, and I can't stand it. I, when I, they pile on, oh yeah. Well, like, listen, he's already got like three dudes on him, and then right. some little bitch comes up and th and throws haymakers at him. Well, I'll tell you I'm what, like, if it's Cam Newton who's part of it, and I want to swing at him, I'm going to wait until nine other guys are <laughs> yeah, on. Him. Sure, right. Uh, it was not clear what started the altercation. Newton did not directly explain that in his uh, YouTube show, saying only the situation starts with words and it should have ended with words. Yeah, that's when you get, get a guy that size, you wait until the two or three other guys take it. You go up and do your tap and run away. He also acknowledged that the scuffle would have gotten worse and that his involvement makes it harder for him to act as an example to young players. So he has <laughs> apologized for that. Uh, let's see. You got time for a little bit more? Yeah. So Joshua Jackson has signed on for his first movie role in nearly 10 years. 10 years, man. Yeah. Uh, joining the cast of the upcoming... 10 years, man. 10. Uh, the new Karate Kid movie. Uh, plot details He's about... He's too old for the Karate Kid. He's not going to play the Oh, all right. Yeah. Uh, plot details about the movie have mostly been kept under wraps, uh, but Jackson is said to be one of the movie's main characters, along with Ralph Macchio and Jackie Chan, who are both reprising their franchise roles. Huh. Uh, the titular Karate Kid will be played by Ben Wang, who previously starred in the Disney Plus series American Born Chinese. Uh, Jonathan Entwistle, uh, who directed I'm Not Okay With This and The End of the Effing World, uh, will be on board, as well as Rob Lieber, uh, to help write it. Uh, so the movie is scheduled to hit theaters December 13th this year. I'm trying to figure out who he might play. Um, He's not a martial artist per se. No, but he. I, I bet he. maybe he'll be a villain in a villainous yeah, role. Maybe I'm a, thinking. A, a villainous, uh, you know, uh, somebody who's getting the kids right, in the right. wrong direction or something like that. Who knows? So we'll see. Uh, two more quick things. Sex and the City is scheduled to start streaming on Netflix as of April 1st. I cannot <clears throat> wait. Uh, it is uh, previously, <clears throat> excuse me, only been available to stream uh, via Max. All 94 episodes of the show, which ran from 1998 to 2004, will be available. I think you all pretty much consider me a carry, right? Oh, no, no, no. You're a Samantha. <laughs> oh, really? No doubt. Oh, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. My cousin works on the new set. He builds the sets. Really? For the new show, oh. the new one. Oh, what? okay. Yeah. The dancing cousin? Uh, no, his sister's husband. Okay. Okay, so, got so it. <laughs> any, any, uh, any scuttlebutt from the set? Is he treated no. well? Uh, Do they put yeah, their no. cigarettes out oh, on no, him? Oh, no, he, he, he loves the job. He, he's worked on a lot of, like, Broadway sets, and he's in whatever union that is. Oh, but, yeah, it's uh, a good so union. He, yeah, he works on all the sets, but, uh, I was with him yesterday, and, and he was like, yeah, I'm on the Sex and the City set. He says like, the hardest part is building Sarah Jessica Parker's face. Exactly. <laughs> 
<laughs> he didn't say that, <laughs> by the way, for the record. One last story. Uh, actor Wendell Pierce, who I think is great, who's so good in uh, Jack Ryan, uh, yes. has joined James Gunn's Superman as Perry White. Oh. I think it would be perfect. Oh, yeah, he's, yeah, yeah, he has that. a type. Uh, Editor-in-chief of the Daily Planet, which employs Clark Kent and Lois Lane and Jimmy Olsen. So he is taking over that role. Which Lawrence Fishburne had played it before in the East yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, that's right. All right, we are ready for the clips. So Hot Wheels Let's Race leaves other Hot Wheels series in the dust by incorporating the entire tiny car universe. I love those cars. Uh, me too. And here, uh, Mattel <laughs> Playground Executive Producer Rob David talks about giving kids firsthand driving experience. There have been um, animated series and specials um, before in Hot Wheels, and they've been great, but they've usually tended to focus on a very specific part of the brand and our hope and our dream was to kind of crack a story that could really represent the entire Hot Wheels universe and that's why we set it at Hot Wheels City, um, the city that never breaks. You! Hot Wheels Let's Race premieres tonight on Netflix. Here's our next clip. Joe Manganiello <laughs> is doing something he's never done before, hosting a game show. And the new role comes with former Deal or No Deal host Howie Mandel's blessing. And here Joe's, uh, Joe explains why. They had known that I was kind of a world explorer. I go on expeditions sometimes. Like I went to Iceland a few years ago. And I'm also a survivor junkie, naked and afraid junkie. I just thought you're calling the right person. Shut up, dummy. <laughs> uh, deal or No Deal Island. Airs tonight on NBC. I do like that guy. Uh, yeah. He was he was actually very funny in the in the uh, Netflix Pee Wee's uh, Pee Wee movie that they did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's he's a quirky kind of dude. I'm interested to see how this plays out. I actually liked Deal or No Deal. Did you? I know the conceit is stupid, but there was something compelling about it, and uh, I got a kick out of it. And uh, Howie was a great host. Uh, but we'll see. I don't know how they they intertwine the island part of this game. I don't know yeah, how it works. So I think we'll it's just to see. see attractive people. Well, that's part of it for yeah. sure. Yeah. All right, and there you go. That's what I have uh, in the entertainment report for you this morning. All right, uh, Marlon Wayans is going to be checking in with us around 9 o'clock this morning. He's performing at um, uh, the event center at Live Casino on Friday. So we'll spend a little bit of time checking in with him. It's been a while since we've chatted. So uh, we got that coming up and more. Make sure you stick around. We'll be back in just a moment. WMMR. Thanks. So to Kathy. support you, Kathy, there's a piece of copy that both you and I read, Preston, where there are no capital letters at the beginning of no. the sentence. Yeah. <laughs> I remember seeing... And it's um, like, what is this? I remember seeing Inside the Actor's Studio with uh, Christopher Walken. It was ages ago that right. he did that. And he said that the first thing he does with a script is he removes all the punctuation. Ah. Really? Which is part of why I guess he has that weird... Cadence. ...delivery yeah. that he has. And he will he will remove the punctuation for whatever reason. It's just his method. Wow. Yeah. It's, that uh, seems it, bizarre to me. Right? So... Brought to you by the Baxter. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Well, listen, uh, there was a story that I I stumbled across uh, that I thought a lot of us might relate to and wanted to pass along to you and invite you to share your own personal stories because I'm sure that there are plenty of them. Um, There was a, uh, a, it's kicked off with a story about uh, this guy, he's 59 years old, lives in the UK, he's a musician, and he has a hairless sphinx cat. Uh, who, you know, is his pet. Yeah, they're kind of cool. And they are cool looking. And he stumbled, he tripped over his cat and it left him with car crash-like injuries. He said, I was massively, massively injured. I had a fractured skull, broken bone in the neck, two fractures in the spine, nine broken ribs, and each rib has multiple fractures and I had a bit of blood in the lungs as well. Oh my God. So when he tripped over his cat... He fell down the stairs. Oh, no. And that's what happened. Okay. So my wife, Claire, you know, so the, what the cats do is they, they set up a sort of a uh, gauntlet at the top of the stairs. The object, too make you fall down the stairs. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> she's going and she's negotiating them. And as she does, one moves around her feet. She thinks she stepped on the cat. She slips and goes down on her rib. <gasps> oh, On the stairs? And, right. So she almost, oh. she, she fractured her rib and then was like immobile for a couple of days. Um, they constantly, this happens in my house. So we adopted this uh, this Newfie, this uh, Newfoundland dog, which is, I, God, I love this dog. 
about 80 pounds, big dog. She parks right between the uh, living room and the door into the kitchen. Mm. Sprawls out. And I'm like, all right, baby, if you want to be there, that's fine. So I've I've got to literally do like parkour, Steve. Because I just saw Dune, I can see you doing the sand walk. Oh yeah, uh, oh through yeah, through your house, right? That sort of thing. Yeah. Now on the other side are the cats that are now waiting for me to feed them, and we have eight cats. So Kizzy raises up her head, and and I I'm like, oh no, and I go, <laughs> oh, slamming across. <laughs> across the refrigerator, and I land on one of the cats. Oh. Now, you can't say to the cat, all the cats go, oh, my God, he's going to kill us. <laughs> they all go spreading out, like running like crazy, and I, I literally slid down, fell off the floor, oh, fell onto man. the floor. All the refrigerator magnets come down, <laughs> and they're all looking at you like, <laughs> "Yeah, what are you doing? What's what? your problem? What's the big deal? <laughs> no What's up clue. with you, dude? Yeah, yeah, it sounds like an obstacle course at your house oh, <laughs> every and, single time and, you get and up. The worst thing, Case, is when you are just walking around, and I'm good at it. I have eight cats again. I've had as many as 12 in the house. Moving around, moving around, and then you'll hear, Wee! and you've stepped on a tail. Yeah. And it's like, God damn it! Well, yeah. the and cats then, weave, too. They'll right, weave right. in between your legs. Because I don't, it's the last thing you want to do is hurt them. But when you scream out like that, yeah. they all go running. Yep. Yeah. Um, so for some reason at my house uh, with Reggie, the dog, the 75-pound dog, it, it's a race to everywhere you're going. Right? Everywhere. And, yeah. he, and he needs to be there first. <laughs> I don't know why that is. I don't know if he wants to go and check out. Like, hey, let me just run upstairs real I got quick. This. Make sure it's safe for you. But like, but I also know this, so I have to. Like, if I'm going up the steps or down the steps, I have to either stand at the bottom of the steps and let him go first, or stand at the top of the steps and let oh, him the, go. Otherwise, the, he's just going to take me the out. The run down the stairs, mm -hmm. forget it. Mm -hmm. And then I, again, case it's liter it's like every cartoon of all the cats going down, surrounding your feet as you're going down the stairs, and it's like you. Like Preston, as I said in, in the break leading up to this, or before the commercial break, I was telling you, it's like that that hallway fight in Daredevil where yeah. you're just trying to get down the hall. Yeah. Well, you're lucky, too, if the cats scatter because sometimes they get so spooked that then they come back at you, which is what happened to me <laughs> right, once right, before. Yeah. And my cat came at me because she got scared. She thought... I was, I guess, she's gonna yelling, kill us. Yeah, I mean, yeah, pretty, pretty much. But I mean, with the with the weaving in and out of the feet when you walk with cats, like, I mean, I've I haven't had any like you know serious injuries, yeah. but I mean, yes, tripping, falling, slipping, like hanging onto the refrigerator, everything falling mm. off it. I mean, it's it's inevitable if I, you have cats or small dogs. Your Dune reference was spot on because because <laughs> because I mean, literally, press them. Like, I can make it. I can make it. I yeah. can make it. I was at my, uh, I, I believe it was my high school graduation party uh, where, so my dog Hershey's a chocolate lab. He was just minding his own business, just sitting on the deck, and there was a whole bunch of people. And you just hear this blood curdling, like, <laughs> and this woman, larger woman, uh, stepped on him and then fell on top of him. Oh, no. yeah, I know, oh. I know. And you want to feel bad for the woman. Yeah. My dog! But yeah. my dog was the one who cried. Yeah. I think oh, she ended up being okay. Uh, here's a text from our buddy, uh, Cast Iron Kyle. He said, uh, I tripped over our cat going down the stairs. I got a concussion and a really bad brain bruise. Wow. wow. And I didn't feel right for almost two weeks after that. All right, 215-263-WMMR if you've tripped over your pet. And been injured from it. Now, this guy that I told that I opened the story with, he broke his, he <laughs> broke pretty much everything. Uh, said he was treated at the major trauma unit at uh, Queens Medical Center, and his recovery took about a year. Mm. He added that he held no umbrage towards the the cat, calling the accident just one of them things. Um, while not often disaster as disastrous as his experience, accidents involving pets, including tripping over them, are more common than you might think, according to a study from the. U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, roughly 90,000 people a year are taken to emergency rooms due to falls caused by dogs and cats. Uh, the study found that uh, pets were a fall hazard for all ages, but particularly for those uh, age 75 and above. So yeah, I would imagine, can, right? Yeah. Um, and I think the study goes on to, I think cats are worse, Kathy, as you were saying. Well, cat, cats Sorry. are yeah, the, the, the slalom thing. And I, <laughs> it's exactly why I love them. I love that they, they're, 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 they'll rub against you and... You know, when, as I said, Kizzy's a bigger dog. The thing is, though, Preston, if you have cats long enough, you'll eventually be able to dance in the Bolshoi Ballet. <laughs> you will have developed a skill set that will allow you to do all of those moves. 
Uh, they found uh, nearly 423,000 incidents of people averaging 53 years old visiting emergency departments due to injuries caused by being pulled or tripped by their dog's leash. So that's another oh, thing that, that can I happen. Can see too, I, yeah. I saw now uh, we you know our dogs have always been of a, of a decent size. I saw this woman though. I don't know how it happened because it was a smaller dog, but basically like it almost looked like a like a, a lawnmower. Like what? Jing! And the dogs just started running, and she was smaller, and she went like almost like da. <laughs> she like, spun around. Ta-da! Okay. And you can't help but laugh because it's, you know, it's, it's funny. Steve, I was going to say, mine's a different type of dance is when the cats weave in between your yeah, legs yeah. and then also when you're wearing black pants and you don't want them to touch the sure. leg. Sure, yeah, forget, forget black in a house with cats. <laughs> yep. That's how uh, Matt and I reconnected again. He was in town because his mom had gotten pulled over by the dog because he saw a dog that he didn't like across the street. Oh, got and pulled he was down? trying to protect her. Oh, wow. Pulled her down. I think maybe there was like a tree wrapped around or something like that. So she Ugh. had to get surgery in her wrist, he was in town, called me, and here we go. Dude, the amount of wow. injuries you can get on your wrist, if you are if you have a, a, a dog on a leash or a lead or whatever, yeah. uh, they will yank you. Uh, that's why I always try to keep a firm grasp on that leash. As the tag says, uh, tripped over my dog, broke her femur on <gasps> her growth plate, and oh, I got a no. concussion. Everybody ran to the dog and left me <laughs> on the floor. Oh, no. <laughs> yep. Yep, you're large. You'll be okay. You're much bigger than the dog. Uh, let me go to Heather. Hi, Heather. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, what's up, Heather? Um, about maybe eight or ten years ago, I woke up in the middle of the night, tried to walk across my living room, and my bowling ball of a tabby cat ran in front of me. I tripped over her, rolled my ankle, um, basically commando crawled down the hall to my son's room because he had a lower bunk bed, <laughs> leapt on that drug myself down the hallway again the next morning and told my husband I needed to go to the doctor. Uh, long story short, I was in a boot and on crutches for about six months. Oh, Jesus. Oh my God. I know. And I had to have surgery, so I now have an artificial tendon in my one ankle. Oh, my God. <laughs> so you tore yeah. a tendon. I tore the tendon. I tore the tendon. I tore the ligaments. It oh, well wow. and truly righteously sucked. And she was deaf. So she couldn't hear me say, move. Oh. That's why I said move. I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that... Had her, yeah, but you... had her over the, over the cat, just sprawled out. My husband's asleep. I'm, like, calling for him. I get no response. And I'm like, well, I guess I'm sleeping on the bottom bunk tonight. Oh, yeah. Was, oh, yeah, it sucks. Well, you, you oh, have full-blown uh, cat battle scars. So, yeah, you're... Uh, uh, oh, You yeah, earned it. Yeah. And trying to deal with her to take her to the vet was, like, sticking your hand in a moving blender. Mm-hmm. And, like... I became that animal parent when the animal's in the back of the vet screaming and I'm just sitting in the waiting room and somebody goes, oh boy, that cat's not happy. And I'm like, yeah, I know. I can't figure it out. And then they walked out and handed her to me and I was just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And plus you have to deal with, uh, for six months, people going, oh my God, what happened to you? (laughs) I tripped over my cat. Explain the story that I just don't know how to walk in front of a house. (laughs) Right. Oh, that's funny. All right. Well, not funny, but you know what I mean. Oh, no. Memories. Thanks, Heather. Appreciate (laughs) it. Have a great time. All right. See ya. Let me go to Joe. Hey, Joe. Morning, sir. Good morning. How are you? Good, buddy. What's up? Uh, well, this happened about a week after I had a heart stent. So I was out of work already, um, getting ready to go back to work, um, get out of bed, think I stepped on my dog, stepped wrong, uh, and tore my hamstring. Oh, my God. That is a Good common. Job. So a lot of times, so does your dog routinely sleep along the side of the bed? Yeah, my dog, if, if my dog is about five pounds, I'd be lying. He's a very small dog. Oh, um, so I thought I stepped on him because he sleeps on my side of the bed and, you know, I'm a big guy. So I stepped awkwardly and I felt a real painful pop in my right leg and <sighs> out of work for three more days. Like, Joe, marches. I wonder, I wonder if you hadn't had that stent surgery done, if you would have had a heart attack <laughs> from the pain that you experienced <laughs> from popping your, uh, your, uh, Out- tendon, tendon yeah. yeah. And it was kind of the same thing the last caller said. And, you know, my wife gets out of bed, dog okay? No, I'm just laying on the ground. That's fine. Don't <laughs> yeah, worry that's about all. It. The dog all right. okay. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Do your Appreciate dogs, it. do they sleep do they sleep up in the bed or where they sleep on the yeah, floor? Yeah, they sleep with Rochelle yeah, in, yeah, yeah. in the bed. We do. We have a dog bed on the floor, and, and sometimes Haley will sleep in that. But, uh, yeah, they're, they're kind of cuddlers yeah. for the most part. So our beds are covered with cats, yeah. obviously. <laughs> and, and unlike you with Rochelle, we sleep in different... Uh, bedrooms, uh, and she sleeps with Kizzy right next to her. Mm-hmm. So I'm just waiting for that moment where 
she thinks she's stepping on the dog's tail and has one of these scenarios. I'm going to go to Ted. Hi, Ted. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. What's up, Love bud? you guys. Oh, oh thank man. you. Appreciate it. What's up? 20 plus years. Listening. Excellent. Uh, uh, well, I was uh, walking down the stairs to let the dog out uh, about five years ago or so, and uh, we had a beagle, and uh, of course, he uh, got tangled up in my legs, and I went down the stairs. Uh, I thought I was okay, uh, got myself up, uh, sat down for a second, walked back up the stairs and passed out, uh, had uh, a head injury, concussion, was oh taken to Paoli's trauma unit, uh, lit it overnight, had uh, a broken uh, thumb, had a concussion, God. missed about three days of work. Um, and I wasn't, I wasn't really right for about, uh, three months. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's, that's my story. <laughs> oh, oh, the beagle. Yeah. Yeah. And, all that and, damage. And almost always the, the pet comes out unscathed, uh, in oh, these yeah. things. Oh yeah. yeah. He's yeah. just kind of staring at me at the bottom of the, uh, <laughs> it's and, it okay. and like, it, uh, could you get up? Yeah. I need to go out. <laughs> it's the most hilarious Thanks, thing. Dad. So I didn't, the dog didn't, our old dog, Chelsea, didn't cause me to fall, but I was going down. We used to live near the 100 steps, oh, you know. Yeah. Uh, right. yeah, so I'm going down, and I had not realized that a thin layer of ice had formed on the stairs. So I'm at one of, you know, I, I walk off one of the landings down to one stretch of stairs and literally pressed in, slid down my back all the way down. Da, 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 and I look over, and, and there's Chelsea right next to me, tail wagging like, that was awesome. All right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, they have, just, they have no percent. Did you do that for me? Mm -hmm. uh, according to the CDC, about 66% of falls associated <clears throat> with cats and 31% of falls associated with dogs are caused by falling or tripping over the pet. Uh, but cats may be more misunderstood than malevolent. However, according to that same study, there they were there were 7.5 times as many injuries involving dogs as cats. Huh. Uh, that was the case in 2020 when 28 year old Abby Hay was left with life changing injuries. She tripped over her Chihuahua Roo uh, while walking up a staircase, and she lost her footing and fell down 18 stairs. Jeez. Oh, Tearing ligaments and breaking three bones in her ankle, the injury required two brackets and four screws to heal. Uh, she said, I couldn't believe such a small animal had done that much damage, <laughs> and I can't believe that it happened. So we're the big dumb ones walking around them, yeah, though. You stop know? and think about it. I've often pointed this out. As I walk through my house, and, and the cats are wildly cocky because imagine if, if, if a... If a High rise building started walking past you because <laughs> that's what I, that's what I am at that yeah. point, right? Yeah. And they don't fine, no yeah. problem. They yeah. they won't move. Got it. Yep. Uh, let's go to Tori. Hi there, Tori. Hello. Good morning, everyone. Hey, good morning. What's up, Tori? Um. So this story is for my mom. Actually, um, she was pet sitting our dog while my husband and I were on our honeymoon. And um, she brought our dog to her work. And then during her lunch hour, uh, she was taking him for a walk and was locking up her door. And at the top, um, outside her office, there was like six or seven steps up to the front door. So as she was locking it, our dog saw a squirrel, <laughs> left mm -hmm. off the stairs, dragged her with him. Oh, my she God. was holding onto his leash. And he ended up breaking her jaw. Oh, <laughs> the jaw. During her honeymoon, and she felt so guilty calling us on her honeymoon that she didn't. So we came home only to find out that she was in the hospital. And now my little sister calls him the jawbreaker. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I got to tell you, there's nothing. Oh, <laughs> it, no. Seeing, and Casey, I know you're an AF, America's Funniest Home Videos oh, yeah. fan. There are countless videos of pet owners being yanked at, at by a dog running after a squirrel. Oh, oh yeah. The old thing is true. Yeah. They bolt, and the bigger the dog, the more hilarious. There's one literally where a guy is coming, smaller guy is coming out his front door, and um, they have these columns, you know, and these yeah. bow columns in front of the house. <laughs> it goes bolting. The guy slams into the column oh, and no. knocks it out. Oh. That's how fast this dog is yanking him. Yeah. But it's like 
it, they just they lose all control. They've got to go after the squirrel. My uh, my grandparents had a, a a dog. It was a German Shepherd, and uh, this is when I was a kid. I was probably I don't know, you know, third, fourth, fifth grade, whatever. And uh, this dog was strong. Yeah, and he didn't. They didn't let him out of his pen much, so I would take him on a walk. Right. No, he would drag me. I mean, I could lay down on sure, the ground yeah, yeah. like a horse, you know, dragging you behind him. I thought it was hilarious. But every now and then he did break it. Like, I'd lose a leash. And yeah, be like, yeah. oh, oh, my God. God. <laughs> and then you've got, just got to sprint forever until you track him down. But uh, fortunately, I never had a leash incident where it like you know got caught it, and tripped me or something like that. And you, it can hurt if you get like a leash burn. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me go to Laura. Hi, Laura. You're on the air. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. Sorry to bother you at work. <laughs> we'll take it. What's up? Um, I have pretty much that exact story. Um, I have two pet ER stories, but the dog, um, I have a standard golden doodle. He's 80 pounds. <laughs> and um, I was walking him, and I tripped over, like, a root of a tree. <laughs> <laughs> And then he saw a squirrel, and I had the leash wrapped around my wrist, which I have learned is a big no-no. Oh. Um, and he dragged me up this hill to chase a squirrel, and my I had to go to the emergency room. My wrist, um, I was in a sling and a wrist brace for a while. Luckily, nothing broke. Yeah, so, it's, so, like, it's like the old being dragged by the horse it's thing. It's exactly like that's what it used it to is. kill people yeah. that way. Um, yeah. I, 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 looked on my, I looked on the ring camera to see if there was any footage because... After I was okay, I was like, that probably looked hilarious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was there? <laughs> no. Uh, um, man. Um, but a neighbor saw it and ran over to like. <laughs> to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Oh, my God. And then this this year, my cat sent me to the hospital for four days. What, <gasps> what happened there? Um. So she was a brand new kitten. And she was, I guess. Um, trying to get to the running water, yeah. so she leaped. Um, and I've never had a cat before, so I didn't realize like how they could leap. <laughs> but anyway, she um, <laughs> she sprung into action, and her little back paw got stuck in a chair, like the the rings of the chair. Okay. Um, and like in the back, and <laughs> I tripped trying to go save her. <laughs> she was dangling by her little paw, and I tripped trying to go save her. And then she bit my finger, and it was like this whole fiasco. Oh and then halfway through work, I realized I can't bend my finger. <gasps> so I asked my boss, I was like, um, I can't move my finger at all. And there was like a big red line going up my arm, and it turned out it was That's like an a, infection. Oh, the Yep. Yeah, the, the, what they call cat scratch fever. fever. Yeah. yeah, it's a real thing. Oh, yeah. my God. Four, four days in Grandview Hospital for... A kitten bite. Onto my cat. Basically. Oh wow! <laughs> did it did it make you sick at all? Besides that, uh, you know the the stiffness in your hand. <laughs> um, I couldn't move my hands, and I was very nauseous. Yeah, <gasps> yeah, yeah. and started crapping in a box. Yeah. Yeah. And Why didn't you lead with yeah, that everyone one? Everyone at work was singing "Cat Scratch Fever." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. That, it, it, that's a real thing, dog. man. Because you got to figure they're 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 crawling around in litter. You know, yeah. you get uh -huh. you get cut. Yeah. yeah. All right. Part of the yeah, deal. So don't. Don't save your kitten, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, That's Lauren. That's one thing. We, we, you, it, you're Laura. gonna do whatever you you know. You're gonna you're gonna jump into action. You're gonna you you do everything you can. You don't want to hurt them. You want to have them. You know, they're they're such an accentuation to your life. And in so trying to do everything for them, you end up getting hurt. Well, yeah, that's the thing. That's why a lot of the injuries happen is because yeah. you don't want to hurt them. You so don't want to wake them up. Falling, you want to step yeah, yeah. around them. <laughs> you're falling down the stairs so that they're okay. Um, you guys remember when uh, my cat did freak out and she attacked yes. my leg. Mm -hmm. Like with nuts on you. So the, yeah. the cat scratch fever, I started to get, Dr. Mike's like, if it gets hard and red and, you know, kind of feels hot, you have to immediately go on an antibiotic. And sure enough, it, it did. Now, I didn't get to the point where yeah. she was, yeah. but he he was like, you know, immediately had me running to, all over the place to get <laughs> some crazy. You, this stuff, he had me get this soap right, that you're supposed to wash with. It's like what they use in the hospitals. Okay. It's like medical grade soap. Like and I'm Benzodyne? like, No, I know what you're talking about. It's pink. 
It's in. It's a big bottle. Oh, and wow. I, I was like, okay, so do I just like take it in the shower? He was like, no, <laughs> you have to dilute it. It's just one drop. And I'm like, oh, okay. All right, well, I don't know. Okay. But I, yeah, so I had to wash with this like crazy soap that they use in hospitals and take an antibiotic wow. and all that, yeah. Wow. Uh, here's a text that says, uh, last fall I was carrying my laundry basket. My cat weaved in between my feet. And I couldn't see him. It tripped through my laundry basket and broke six ribs <gasps> Whoa. on six? the corner of my six. desk. Oh my ribs. God. That's a Do you know how long? massive injury. Yeah. Yeah. My but, wife just had a fractured rib and it took her out for a long six time. Six ribs. Here's another one that says, my wife works overseas. Mother-in-law lives with us. Tripped over my dog and broke both of my wrists. Mother-in-law had to wipe my bum for five <laughs> no, weeks. No, <laughs> no, no, that's, no. No. That's, a, that's a, you, you, nothing requires the mother. You're on We're your own, buddy. We're getting a divorce. Yeah, yeah. Just, well, leave, just Yeah, use, just, your, use no. your pet. Have the pet wipe your ass. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, let me see. No way. No, no that uh, can't be real. I'm sorry. I, as know. much as you, no. I, I know if you have a baby or a, a, a kid, but at a certain point, but like, w- when do you tap out if, you ha- if you're required to wipe a child's ass? <laughs> I, I'm just trying to get a, a benchmark here. Like Steve, a, I remember looking like at the diaper and being like, this is like a man's bowel, bowel movement. movement. We're yeah. done. You're going on the, yeah, on the body. That- <laughs> <laughs> You're on your own. You're uh, on your own, buddy. Let me go to, I'm going to go to Alex. Hi, Alex. You're on the air. Good morning. Good morning. You guys rock. Mm-hmm. Um, Thank you, sir. What's up? So, so uh, about 13 years ago, I lived in Collingswood with my first wife and uh, we had a beagle, JJ. And it was Saturday morning, probably 630 in the morning. Dogs got to pee. There was a ice storm the night before. And I'm like, all right, uh, I should probably clean the stairs because they're icy. And the dog is freaking out. And I'm like, no, no, no. Let me just walk down the icy stairs in my slide. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> That's a good idea. Uh-huh. Uh, so, you know, take the first step, take the first step. The dog then kind of shoots off a little quicker, you know, pulls pulls on the, uh, the, the leash. And then just that little jerk just sends my foot out from under me. And I slide down, I don't know, 10 stairs. Oh, yes. Yeah. To to a, the landing, because that's how high and steep the stairway is. There's like about a third of the way up the stairs is a landing. Oh. And so I slide all the way down the landing, broke like four of the rails on the handrail, you know? Oh, and I'm just laying there like <laughs> like a murder victim. Yeah. Full, you know? And my dog's just at the bottom of the stairs like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Tail yeah. wagging. Yeah. yeah, we're going to do yeah. this or what? Let's go. Yeah. yeah. That's I'm, a neat I'm, trick. I'm assessing, I'm assessing the damage. I'm like, am I broke? Am I, you like, can I move? And they just kind of realized on me, it was still kind of dark out, you know, and I go, oh, my wife could be in bed till 930. Like, I could just be dead here for hours. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, and, and the uh, dog would start yeah. feeding on you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. But, you know. Wow. It's well, what shortly happened. after, shortly after we were divorced. But <laughs> <laughs> all right, thanks, all right, Alex. Thank Appreciate you. it, buddy. All right, thanks. Uh, let me go to Annette. Uh, hi, Annette. Good morning to you. Annette, are you there? On the air, sorry. Uh, yes. I, no, you're on the air. Go ahead. Um. So just this past fall, I have three dogs. Sometimes four when my daughter leaves her dog. They're large, all except for hers. They're Copper's 95 pounds. The other two are 60 pounds. Jeez. And I live in Newtown Square, right behind Gable Field. So I'll walk through the woods, and I'll be on the field, and it's pitch black. And I can't see anything. I've got four dogs on the leash, and they must have seen, I don't know, a deer or a rabbit. Because they took off and lifted me off of my feet. <laughs> and I landed on my face. Oh, man. The tooth went through my lip. I looked like a monster for like two weeks. <laughs> It was just blood everywhere. Aren't you amazed at, at the at the force? The str- I mean, you you basically had a dog team yank yeah. you off your feet. That's a team. That's yeah, the word. Literally uh. lifted into the air. Oh my god! And yeah. On my face. Oh man. I, I tell you what. Thank you, Annette. Uh, um, Chelsea was fifty pounds, about fifty pounds, but the the dog. The structure when yeah. they when she wanted to lock, oh, now man. I could still alpha her ass pretty good. Yeah. But but you're like you little look at you, you uh-huh. I mean just pulling tight. Oh, so Reggie, I mean he's 75 pounds yeah. and he's just pure muscle. Yeah, and he looks even bigger when uh, when he needs a haircut, you know. <laughs> but like when and when he but that's the thing when you when you shave him down and he gets his haircut, you just see how you, <laughs> muscular he is. Do you walk him or is he? I can't. Okay. I can't. No, okay. no, it, because and listen. It's you know, 
mostly, if not all, my fault. Uh, but he's just not good on a leash. But I, I, I actually just took him for a, uh, a haircut on Saturday, and thankfully the floors at PetSmart are they're concrete, so yeah. he can't get the traction. Yeah. Because if he could, he'd be dragging me all over that <laughs> right. You know? Just excited to be he's in there. Just so yeah. massive. You ever so him? strong. When they get caught on ice, and and like with again another story with Chelsea, there was it was I didn't realize how icy it was. We take her out for a walk, and she's <laughs> yeah. And, and so I I pick her up. And er and it, it's so icy that I'm slipping. So, but every couple of feet, I'm holding her, and I turn my body into the fall. So, I'm absorbing all the hits every time we fall. Yeah, you know. And she's looking at me like you are a jackass. It is pretty funny because our our floors downstairs are there's there's hardwood and then there's tile. And when he wants to go out and he gets so excited, he he books to the door, but he can't stop. So he yeah. just, he Tokyo drifts all over the house is it, what he does. It, and I can't help it. It's funny. The footage of the, of the German shepherd that is having a, a dream and, <laughs> yes. and believes it's running in the dream sure. uh -huh. and wakes up and runs into the wall. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> it's, yeah. Well, listen, uh, according to the study from the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, roughly 90,000 people a year are taking emergency rooms just for falls. I mean, that doesn't, that doesn't include the other injuries that you no, get from your pets, no, yeah. but just from falls that are caused by dogs and cats, by you tripping over them or them getting in the way or yanking you on, on the leash or whatever it may be. So uh, they're amazing, wonderful things to have in your life. But every now and then, a <laughs> little bit dangerous. They might so kill you. Be careful. Thank you for the calls. I apologize to those who we did not get a chance to go to on the phones, but uh, we'll we'll get you on another time. We do need to take a break. We're going to come back in a second. We will get into the bizarre file when we return later on this morning. Marlon Wayans will be joining us. Stay put. We'll be right back. Metro traffic on 93.3 WMMR. All right, thanks, Kath. Real quick, um, I have a uh, couple of shard outs to do. All set. Uh, before we get to the B file, a couple of them are overdue, and I apologize for that. And then one of them is right on the mark for today. Uh, first one, this is, uh, hey, Preston, sometimes when you want a birthday shard out, you got to ask for it yourself. Uh, I've been a consistent listener since fall of 2009 when I started college, but I've always listened on the radio, when my mom would take me to school. If I can't listen live, I always go to the podcast to listen. February 18th, oops, yeah. is my 33rd birthday, and I wanted to give myself a shout-out from my favorite morning people that I hope to meet someday. Uh, thank you for all you do. You make my heart happy every day uh -huh. with love, and that is from uh, Connie B. So here's a shout and Connie, I apologize that I did not get to that sooner, so I don't know how that got lost in the shuffle. But well, again, we implore anyone listening, if you know someone who has the first name Connie and the last initial B, just tell them, even if it isn't them, that yeah. Preston gave them a birthday shard out. I think our because last, I can say our last name. We need you. Uh, Biankowski is her last All name. Right. Constance All right. Biankowski. Const All right. Constance is a Constance great name. Constance is a nice name. I like Constance that. Fry. I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> From trading uh, places. Yes. I was on over the weekend. I watched that. Was it? Yep. Yeah. Uh, greeting to you, bunch of ungrateful bitches. Ah, I like John that. from DeBellaware here, it says. <laughs> uh, I'm requesting a shout out for my lovely wife, uh, Faith, and myself on February 24th. Uh, we'll be leaving our native state of Delaware for sunny Florida. We plan to tune in from Rock Ledge on the app every morning. We will not make it to Clearwater this year, but we'll see you guys there next March. A nice juicy shout out anytime in February would be great. I couldn't even get it in the damn Duh, month. man. Well, it's a busy time. Uh, and it says uh, Sasquatch on a Simeon. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Sasquatch on a Simeon. Yeah. I love that. Um, where love is you guys like Dr. Mike. John Shore. Uh, where's Rock Ledge? I don't know. Uh, it's in. I guess it's in Florida. It's yeah, they're going to be living in Florida. But I don't know where Rock Ledge. No, Rock Ledge is uh, around here. I feel like it's uh, either Bucks or Montgomery County. Oh, really? Yeah. There's also. It is also in Florida. Yeah, because they're, oh. yeah, they're moving to Florida. So oh. all right. All right. Uh, and then this one I'm going to get right on time. Uh, my friend Jeff Stricker and his wife Megan have an anniversary today. Uh. It's 13 years. So happy anniversary. To Jeff and Megan. So I'm glad I got those in there. All right. Uh, it is time now for the Bizarre File. Now, Bizarre. WMMR presents Bizarre. Kristen and Steve's Bizarre, Bizarre File. 
Brought to you this morning by Pro Team Collision, your certified collision repair center. If you get into an accident, Pro Team Collision is there for all of your auto body repair needs. In Colorado, uh, the man who was killed in a large commercial grade firework explosion on Thursday has been identified. His name was Christopher Paul Cade. Uh, police said multiple people called around ni- called 911 around 12.50 a.m. Thursday to report an explosion at a dog park. Oh, man. When the officers arrived, they found a deceased man as well as several people around him who were visibly distraught. Police said they believe the man traveled to Aurora with two others to uh, visit food and beverage businesses. Let's go visit food and beverage businesses. <laughs> and bring some fireworks. Love it. Yeah. We'll uh, go to the dog park on the way. Uh, the trio went to and the And then park, I'll eat poop. Park around 1 a.m. with several large commercial grade fireworks. The man was lighting one of the fireworks. It exploded and it killed him. There you go. I mean, it's like a bomb, really. I mean, when you realize how many professionals who do this end up dying, yeah, uh, maybe you shouldn't be doing that. Uh, nobody else was injured. The bomb squad deactivated four additional fireworks. Police called this an accidental death and initially said the device was some kind of homemade explosive, but yeah. I think they think it may have been purchased. I guess uh, last Sunday night, my um, neighbors were celebrating the Lunar New Year, and they were lighting off fireworks at like 9 o'clock at night on a Sunday, and they were all exploding like right next to our windows. Oh, your Man. dog's going nuts? No, no, they weren't, but I was like, you know... Maybe Sunday. not. Yeah. Yeah. Well, nine o'clock. Uh, it, what is what is the uh, the noise ordinance? Is, is it ten p.m.? I don't know. I'm not sure. Right. Uh, Louisville, Kentucky emergency crews repelled. This is wild. Repelled off of the Second Street Bridge on Friday to rescue yeah. the driver of a semi truck that was dangling over the Ohio River. Kathy, this is like a nightmare that you would live. <laughs> An operation uh, the city's fire chief called a once-in-a-career type thing. You should Have you seen this? No. It's right it's out of a movie. Hanging no. over the bridge. Okay. Right no. out no. of a freaking movie. Um, the police said officers responded just after noon to the bridge on a crash involving a semi-truck, pickup truck, and two passenger vehicles. The crash caused the semi-truck to break through the western barrier of the bridge and partially dangle over the Ohio River. A woman was stuck in the cab of the truck hanging off of the bridge over the river. She was extremely lucky the truck didn't fall into the river. We're looking at this. No, no, Right? Look at this. Unbelievable. That's where you roll your windows down and you jump out (laughs) to save yourself. That's right. Uh, This this happened in the Fantastic Four movie. Wow. Uh, The fire department rescue quickly uh, was on scene and they began setting up a rope system. Bryce Carden was the rescue member who rappelled down to get the woman to safety. Holy. Uh, He was the point man on what he called a high angle rescue. It's amazing. This is actually where you don't move, like, not even well, yeah, one the single slightest move. Bit. Just stay still. And the guy was such a champ, Kathy, he lowered back down so she could get her cigarette. <laughs> um, <laughs> he said I was... They're expensive, n- <laughs> bro. He said I was not nervous at all going over the edge because I knew that they had me on the top side. Once I reached her, she was super calm, collected, and helped me do what I needed to do. Uh, to get her to safety. Uh, There's dramatic video, and it shows him pulling the woman back up to safety. Uh, She was in the truck dangling over the water for about 45 minutes. It's amazing. Uh, The driver of the semi was taken to the hospital to make sure she was okay. Two occupants of the passenger vehicles involved in the crash were taken to local hospitals with serious and life-threatening injuries. So maybe we'll have a follow-up on that. But I've never seen anything quite like this. And like Kathy's right. It's one of those things where it's like, do not move. Yeah. If you like, shift breathe. in any way at all, it could take the whole thing over the edge. My inclination would be to kill the time by using my shake away weight, Preston. Oh, yeah. yeah. You may as well get a little workout yeah. in while you're not going anywhere. <laughs> uh, a man who is training to become a pilot had learned how to navigate a plane if its engine were to fail two days prior to experiencing an engine failure, leading him to steer the small aircraft away from homes and land in the woods. Richard Newman owns the plane involved in the crash. He's also the president of the Puget Sound Flyers Club, a nonprofit organization that supports and educates youth about aviation. Assad Ali is part of that nonprofit. Now, Newman said Ali took off from the field about uh, on February 16th. Uh, he said Ali was finishing up his training and getting ready for his examination. He flew to Port Angeles, and on his way back, he experienced sudden issues about 3,000 feet. He remained um, calm, though, right? Yeah, his engine... <laughs> His engine failed. He said it's relatively simple air-cooled engine, similar to what an old Volkswagen engine would be. Mm. Uh, the plane crashed in a wooded area. The plane, he said, absorbed all of the impacts of the trees that he was flying into. The wings took most of the impact, the struts, the landing gear, everything. 
Uh, but he managed to maneuver the plane right between the trees. It's amazing. So there was no impact on the airframe itself. Uh, he was able to use his training. He had learned to safely land the plane, which possibly saved the lives of nearby families as well. He was not injured in the scr- in the crash. He was uh, he left the plane yeah, without, without a scratch. Uh, Ali trained with a simulator on how to navigate different types of emergency situations, including engine failures. Wow. The notion of flying a plane is is a romantic one, and it's enticing, but, you know, I, I think I'm just too dumb. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, and you never know what can happen, yeah. too. All right, and then this story, this is messed up. A head and another arm were recovered at a Long Island park where homicide detectives returned Friday to search for more body parts a day after two arms and a leg had turned up. What the hell is happening? Within about a mile of each other in the area. Investigators say a uh, total of six body parts have been recovered. If they can build the person, they can ask him or her who did this. Uh, This is from uh, Southard's Park Pond in Babylon Village. An arm... I know this area very well. The head and parts of a right leg and left leg belong to an adult woman who police are working to identify. Two previously recorded arms and those are those of a man and police Mm. indicate late Friday that it's believed they belong to the same individual. Jeez. Uh, It appears the body parts had been there for just under a matter of days, if not hours before being found. Uh, the grim series of discoveries started with a group of teenagers who found a left arm in the bushes as they were walking to school. One of the kids called a parent and the parent called 911 after checking it out for themselves. A short time later in the early afternoon, a police dog searched another part of Large Park, found a human leg under leaves about a mile from the first location and not far from a nearby elementary school. Later Thursday, a right arm was found about 20 feet further into the woods from where the first arm was discovered in the morning. Man. If, you, if you're going to... Uh, okay, it's horrifying. If you're going to vivisect a body, though, like that, you don't just... Just start chucking it, right, throwing it around whee, the woods. Whee, whee. Right, yeah. Uh, Police didn't immediately provide any information on uh, the limbs found, hoping that uh, DNA testing and examining tattoos will help lead to the identification. That is just messed up. So there might be, well, maybe it's some sort of gang thing. There's MS-13 on Long Island, so there could be a lot of gangs on Long Island, I would imagine, too. So, yeah, who knows? Yeah, I ran with the gang press. Remember some of the pink ladies? (laughs) (laughs) You were tougher than you guys led on to believe, so... All right, and that's what I have in the bizarre file for you. We're going to take a quick break. We'll come back in a moment. Don't forget, Marlon Wayans joining us a little bit later on this morning. We'll be right back. Cardboard Classic 2024, and we uh, we were talking all morning long off air, yeah, about uh, the events of the day because it was a it was a long day. It was a full day. It was a nice, sunny, beautiful day. Beautiful too. day. Weather was fantastic. I was thinking, what are the odds? Because Kathy, the first year it was that way as well, and this was as good, if not better, weather wise. And it just blew me away how how awesome it was. Um, but ha- had it been a day later. Oh or, my God! Or, we would have screwed. Or a couple of days earlier, yeah. like we hit the sweet spot. We yeah. got Perfect. very, very lucky. We got like the one, yeah, yeah. The, one of the nice days. So I was like loaded for bear with like gloves and all that same. stuff. I didn't even uh, need them. I, same. Yeah. Yep, uh, but it was uh, it was it was full. We we had a we had a jam packed mountain, a nice crowd. Everybody was in a great mood. It was so much fun. And by the way, Kathy, um, I am still sore. From skiing for an hour on Dude, Thursday. No, we Dude. skied. We ski for almost two hours. Oh, we did. Yeah. Okay, it makes me feel a little <laughs> bit better. But I was uh, I was really like uh, run down on Friday, and I didn't know like what was going. on. Like, oh, that's right. I used muscles on Thursday that I hadn't used in yeah. like well, and twenty also, years. Because there was a point where Casey and I were walking up the hill. Yeah, yeah. They we, they had like some of the slopes closed because they they had had yeah. terrible weather uh-huh. and they were making snow. So some of them were closed while they were making snow. No, and there was a point where Casey and I uh, got to where we, we were finished. We wanted to come back to the lodge, and it was either take one more lap down a black diamond or walk up the hill. So we started w- walking. He turns around. He's like, this is up to you. I'm like, black diamond. It actually wasn't that bad that, because good. when we were going back up the, uh, the uh, ski lift uh, to get to the lodge, I saw one Another hill that one, was like, yeah. oh, thank God it wasn't that run right there. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah. I mean, that was basically just skiing off of a cliff. <laughs> oh, but, really? Yeah. We, we had fun, though. We did. Chuck was with us for a little while, and then he went in, and Casey and I continued. It was it was really nice. So as the Snow Queen, officially your first time I, there, what did you think? Were we, were we uh, misleading you about how yeah. awesome it was? No, it was awesome. Montage Mountain is beautiful. The whole setup was great. I mean, we could see the sleds perfectly. Like It, it was, and everybody seemed to have a nice time, um, obviously 
obviously because it was so beautiful out. Pe- there was tons of people there. Yeah, it was really, it was really amazing. And when the sleds would make it oh, to the bottom, yes. The crowd, I was in the bathroom for one of them and some, some a woman in the bathroom was like, well, I wonder what's going on out there. I was like, another sled made it to the bottom. That's what's going on out there. <laughs> well, they were really responsive. We, we were trying to get the design right because there, there was like, for example, with the, some of the, some of the sleds, some of the fastest didn't, didn't, would just stop. I know. And, I and know. so what they were trying to do was stop what we almost had happen a couple of times and they had the buffers. I mean, the montage crew is top notch. So they were doing a great job. But they, uh, it was the flying saucer. Oh, I yeah. thought for sure the flying saucer was going to end up in the lodge. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it had the velocity. And Kathy, the year before, that happened a number, number of times. Number of times, yeah. So, yeah. so we're trying to find the right, the right, you know, angle, the right uh, slope angle. But otherwise, you know, they're they're terrific. Yeah, the, the sledding hill ends right at the base of the lodge. So uh, a couple of times, a few <laughs> of the, uh, them did make it all the way and, and ba- crash through the barrier. Yeah, I mean, nobody yeah. got hurt or anything. Oh, but. yeah. I mean, and when they would crash, it was like <laughs> everything would go down. Oh, my I gosh. feel bad, like, you know, when you know that a team spent hours and hours and hours building the sled and it only makes it halfway down. But that's part of the charm as well. Well, yeah. and I think, I do think that, personally, my opinion is that the weather played into why a number of them didn't make it down. They I agree. Like different weather conditions, yeah. they probably would have made it down, and as, as it got later in the day, it got warmer, and they yep. just weren't coming down. And it's unfortunately just a, a nature of the beast. It's something that we have to rely on. The weather is, a, is that one factor that you're like, okay... Everything looks good. Now we just need this to, to yeah. happen. But so. man, oh man. Otherwise, it, it spectacular. It was still great. Yeah. I mean, some, those designs, oh, oh. God. I'm gonna just go incredible. To, I'm going to go to a couple calls of, of some uh, sled builders. And, and we have uh, two on the line now that finished in the top three for best design. Oh, nice. So I'll go to our third place winner and good friend of the show, last year's champion, Bob Haven. Yes. Yes. And his crew came in third place with, uh, or I'm sorry, no, Bob came in second place. Yeah. What the hell am I talking about? Come on now. With the Wally World said, hey, Bob, how you doing, man? Hey, good morning, guys. Did I tell you this year was going to blow last year away? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you did. And it was your sled to to describe to everyone. It was, it was a tribute to Wally World from uh, the National Lampoon Vacation, but it was the... It was the roller coaster that they go on at the end of the movie, and uh, Marty Moose was there, and even Jason Kelsey was uh, was a part of the crew. <laughs> was this the one that Bill went down on? It yeah. was. You got some of the greatest pictures of Bill. Uh-huh. Yeah, Bob, we ended up with, with Bill being in there was just the absolute best because... At the very end, before you guys cross the finish line, he bailed out and jumped. <laughs> and we have we have pictures of it. It's wonderful. Guys, I saw that picture, and um, he saw our sled on the ground. He, he was amazed, but we had all your faces on it. <laughs> and I don't know if you noticed, in car one, the second row, okay. Gary Lauer is in between Kathy <laughs> and young Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see that. So oh, I, I, I put a picture of it uh, this morning on Instagram all right. to make sure she would see that because I know you guys <laughs> can't get outside and see all the details. Now, But um, Bill really surprised us. He met me at the top of the mountain, and someone tapped me on the top, uh, tapped me on the shoulder, and I turned around. It was Bill, and he's like, I'm going on your sled. I'm sitting right there with my picture. Yeah, oh, oh, was. I mean, he, it was, it was he so many totally, people. Totally yeah, surprised us. And, what I, what and, I found amazing was that you, you you make the run, and obviously, you, you know, there was a point where you start, a little bit of steam was lost, and then you started to pick it back up again, go all the way down. And you guys, for a, for a sled that big, did you see how quickly they cleared it off the, the way there, yeah, Preston? Yeah. Everyone oh. jumped right out, picked it up, and out. Well, because yeah. it mostly stayed intact. Yep. Yep, we were watching. I was at the top of the, oh, the hill. Oh, okay, yeah. So we watched it on the way down. We're just like, come on, come on, come on, come on. And it hauled ass uh, once it got over that second uh, little second drop. Up. And yeah. It, it was awesome. And I will say this on the air now because Bob, uh, who had a little liquid courage in him, came over and he's like, man, nobody in the staff has ever been, all the years I've been doing this, nobody's ever been down on one of my sleds. <laughs> and I, I give you my solemn vow <laughs> next <laughs> year. I am on board no matter what you come up with, Bob. I promise you that, okay? Uh, yeah, you, you'll be able to break the uh, Preston C. Cherry there. Yeah, <laughs> all right, yeah, yeah. because Sarah has ridden on one of yours before. I know that. And Sarah has ridden on four of them. Four of them. All right, and yeah. of course now Bill. So you'll get me on board next year for sure. That sounds great. And Dude. um if I can tell you real quick, congratulations to my buddy Pat with the top gun sled. Yeah. Oh my god. And, uh, 
That was amazing. And the Wawa sled was super cool. And I got a, a nice little Delco story about the Wawa sled. Okay. So we have all signs. We have first rider sleds, uh, first lot, uh, rider pictures um, with, uh, you know, the, the, the listeners and all. But we had a Delco Wawa sign. We are Delco. We are not sorry. So word got back to me that they were from Buxco. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I walked over and I asked them to hold the sign. And I got a nice little video of that. You can Aww. check that on. Yeah, that yeah, on yeah, yeah. Yeah, everything looked but, uh, sensational. That was 10 points for uh, Delco to, to you know, mess with those guys. <laughs> oh, was it? Is that what it were, was? <laughs> they were a great group of guys, and uh, they were interacting with the crowd. And, again, that's that's why a lot of us do it, you know. Yeah. We have a lot of fun. Absolutely. That's, you guys clearly have tons of fun. It's the best. You make it happen. So Yeah. Uh, so we, I feel like we rep, rep uh, Delco pretty good. You do. You know, Brad from Delco Jonas at uh, Primitive Shirts gave us a bunch of stickers. We had them all over the sled. And, uh, you know, we, we were hoping to put on a good show for everybody. You, know, you did it. What was pretty wild, I know, Marissa and Casey, you guys, uh, you know, spearheaded a lot of uh, making sure that the social media coverage was, was pretty extensive. But just in passing on TikTok... The sleds were popping up like right yeah. and left. Did you guys see that? Yes, oh, yeah. I did oh, see yeah. that. Yeah, and then also montage in a really, really quick turnaround. Yeah, put a did. really great recap video. It did used actualities from the event. Like at one point, they were like, uh, they they because with the Top Gun sled, uh, Preston and I go, I feel the need, the need, and they had that audio. I'm like, yeah. where did they get this? Yeah, yeah. And they by the had way, their right. own. They had their own video guy, and he was going up and down the mountain. I saw them running in, so I think they were kind of like dropping, you know, some some video off and then going back out. That F14. That was what he's in at 14, we determined, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, we have them on the line. So, Bob, thank you, buddy. We'll see you soon, okay? All right. And again, my favorite picture is Bill with the cigar in his mouth right before he fails. It's awesome. uh, I it's agree. So good. I agree. <laughs> All right. Thanks, uh, Bob. Love you guys. Uh, love you too, man. All right. We're going to go to Patrick Carr. And uh, yes, his design, his, him and the whole crew, which there was a bunch of them, uh, came in third place. It was a top gun sled. Hey, Pat, how you doing, man? Gadzooks, how you guys doing? Gadzooks, buddy. Nice job. Your guys was incredibly impressive. Were you happy how things went? Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. Everybody was, I mean, another great turnout this year. Everybody had some great stuff. Uh, and again, congratulations to Bob on second. Um, felt a little bad for our buddy Mike, uh, Mr. Peanut. Got stuck on the other side of the hill. Yeah. I don't know how that happened, but... <laughs> <laughs> that was his own fault. I think he did it on purpose. <laughs> And but, uh, yeah, we had a great, I mean, we had an absolute uh, blast. We were a little concerned that the, uh, the wingspan was going to hit, like, the flags down there. But, like, right at the bottom of the hill, we saw a couple videos. Like, we kind of just, like, centered in that lane perfectly. I don't know how no, that happened. But, it was great. Yeah. And, Pat, I got to say, like, um, I, just looking at the design was awesome. And then when you got everybody into the sled, the, you took the wings off. Yes. Like, I, I'm like, what? And then everybody they were inside kind of the fuselage. and everybody slid in that way. Like that design was awesome. I, I don't know who the architect was, but like kudos to that person. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, well, a lot of it came down to um, it, we had to design it that way just to get in the truck. Mm -hmm. There's no way we we're going to get you know like I think a U-Haul box truck is like seven feet wide or something like that. So, but it actually worked out perfectly where we could just kind of lift the whole thing up, everybody jump in. There was no, uh, it was really the only break in there uh, in the actual split, so which, that was kind of cool. But uh, yeah, I wow. mean, the whole team did a great job this year and I got to thank, uh, you know, everybody over there and then the tail dragger in, which is where we build at. They give us a hanger for free, which is awesome. Wow. Yeah, you, little, you needed a hanger for this, but it was appropriate. You know, our the dude Barry that uh, owns the place loved the fact that we were doing a uh, a jet this year because he's got all kinds of cool military stuff there. So it was kind of perfect. Where was way. this? What, what, what? Where was the hangar? Uh, so in Hamilton, it's called the uh, Tail Dragger in a museum. Oh, uh, so he's got like a cool little museum there with like lots of war pieces and stuff like that, planes and all kinds of cool stuff, jeeps. Okay. But, yeah, and, and this, you can kind of see some of the stuff in our pictures too. It's like this giant like truck from I think they used in Vietnam called the Mortician. It's got all these crazy guns on it and stuff. Yeah, this you, your your sled should have ended up in the museum. And that's this. Listen, as you pointed out, uh, Casey earlier, they put all the work into this stuff, and then and, and then it's over. Mm -hmm. But well, I mean, some of the, we really at some point somehow a museum. Or obviously, we have the pictures to memorialize them, but you got to see these things in person. One one of the uh, one of the nights we were drinking over there, he really wanted us to bring it back so he could <laughs> mount it on the ceiling, kind of like in the movie world, right now. like in a like, museum, like in an aeronautical way. museum. Yeah. Oh my god, that's the best. 
I was like, there's no way we're going to get this thing back home. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it, take, so, it takes some serious structural damage. All of them do <laughs> on the way down. Yeah, and I had to also, the, uh, our two uh, pilots, our Maverick and Goose, Jess and Sam, oh, yeah. I, jumped out, I jumped out of the plane uh, <laughs> and I turned around. I didn't realize that Jess, who played Goose, was going to wipe blood on our forehead and lay down on the ground. So yeah. I turned around and I thought, oh my God, like something happened. She said, the paramedic saw my reaction and ran over to her and she jumped up and was like, I'm fine, I'm fine. Yeah, so she, Preston, yeah. did you see, they actually put on a, a, they did a little dramatic presentation at the base of the hill. I couldn't see it, but I heard you say that yeah, yeah, on yeah. the mic and I'm like, oh man, it was, so hopefully there's <laughs> video of what you guys were doing because if she got out and put blood on her head like she hit it on the canopy like Goose did in the movie, yeah. that's next level. That's, that's awesome. Yeah, it was, and, and, it was, and she kept it quiet so none of us knew. I was like, oh. Like, she was hilarious because she had the mustache and the aviator oh, yeah. glasses and the whole thing. It was great. And then at the end, she's on her knees like, why God over, over Goose? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I love it. Great work, Pat. Thank you so much for being a part of it, man. Thank you. Always looking forward to next year. You got to tell the gang we we love them. All right, thanks. All right, we're watching uh, these videos. Uh, Marissa's pulling these up, uh, you know, these Instagram videos, and, and she's got really, really great coverage of everything on uh, PressingToSteve.com. But I get to give a special thank you to all the Santa Clauses at the top oh. of the hill. Yeah, man, those they guys, are amazing. Guys. They work their asses off all day long helping push these sleds uh, down the hill. And then they went down on their sled and it made it like four, four inches. Five. Yeah. <laughs> well, one guy ended up on a sled. He was pushed... He, yes. did, oh, he, he did not want to go down. He was he. Was, I, I don't know if he was scared or whatever, but he didn't want to go down on any sleds. And, and then he ended up on one. I think he one. fell on it as he was he pushing it. And that was it. And that was it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, a personal highlight was I got, for the first time, I probably had my most pronounced curse on air. Oh, oh yeah. 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 That, was, that, was awesome. that was awesome. It was awesome. Yeah, it was and I And I had no idea. No, um, it, it was and, it was a little. Um, it, was hard, it was hard to tell. Yeah, when like we, were we would on go air. on the air with yeah. Pierre, yes. and then we would stop, like, kind of paying attention and pay attention then to the to the to the sleds, and uh, and then I'd come back and be like. Wait, we're still talking to Pierre. Are we? Is this still on the air? And yeah. after you would curse, I would ask Pancake. I'm like, are we still on the air? He's like, no, no, we went to break. <laughs> and by the way, you mentioned the Santa Claus is up there working for a long time. It did drag on longer than we had anticipated. They they shut down one of the the lanes, and we don't know why yet. We're going to find that out. We'll do a post yeah, yeah, meeting yeah. And, and see if we can you know fix any issues that we have. We always do that every year, try and fix maybe what went what went incorrectly. It went about. Maybe 45 minutes to an hour longer than it should have. It did, yeah. It was the nature of the beast. It ended up being a great time. Uh, but hang on. We have the, the winning sled. We have somebody representing the winning sled. It was the Wawa sled, which was absolutely phenomenal. Everybody was yeah, talking yeah, about yeah. it. And we have Matt, who's on the line. Hey, Matt, how you doing, buddy? Good. How you guys doing today? Good. All right. I have the team captain named down here as Ron Wurz. Is that correct? Yeah, that is correct. That All is right. correct. He's skiing. I'm not sure. He might be out in Colorado skiing right oh, now. Oh, he's a hardcore he's dude. Celebrating. He's yeah. celebrating. Yeah, and so he should. Dwayne's in, Dwayne's in Florida right now. <laughs> yeah. He went to Disney. Uh, dude, so listen. <laughs> it's uh, it, it, You guys, you pulled off an amazing creation. I mean, everybody was talking about how wonderful it was. Give us some of the details that were on that sled for those who don't know. Well, we had uh, working gas pumps. Um, we were serving John Daly's out of them. Um, <laughs> we had uh, two coffee pots. One was uh, Jolly Ranchers, the other Irish coffee. Um, I loved every, the every, every sled we've done so far, we've always had a tap system in it. Oh, that's <laughs> phenomenal. <laughs> Well, there were yeah, like Kathy was saying. Some of the details were there was a there was a rack of a heated rack of sizzlies. sizzlies. Yeah. Uh, there was all the all the coffee creamers. Yes, yeah. Um, <laughs> all that stuff was represented, and it made it all the way across the finish line to the very end as well. We we were determined. We crashed last year, so we were determined to make it down this year. What was last year's sled that you guys uh, did? We were the classified files. Oh, oh yes, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We, we blew apart pretty good. Yeah, but this was <laughs> this was intact all the way. The detail was top notch. I gotta believe Wawa is gonna love. Has has anybody from corporate seen this or reached out to you guys? There was somebody at the at the uh, montage that said he sent pictures to the president of Wawa. So we'll we'll make sure Chris Geisens, he's the CEO, yeah. he's a friend of ours. We'll We're make sure he sees soon. it. Are we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. They got some sort of anniversary. I think the 60th anniversary uh, they're celebrating oh, they, this year. Yeah. How how can you not seize upon this? Hey yeah. Matt, and listen, it, sometimes it pains me to give any sort of uh, accolades or atten or positive attention to Bucks County, but I, I'm gonna <laughs> give I'm gonna give you this real quick because you guys deserve it. Bucks County. 
Yeah, it was badass. He's bringing a victory back to back to Bucks Co. That's there you right. go. <laughs> nice job. Excellent. Did you guys did you stay uh, the night or did you guys get yeah. out of there right afterwards? We came up Thursday night and stayed the Saturday. I mean, awesome. No shape to drive on. Yeah, that. yeah. yeah. nobody was. That, that is one thing that occurs in the, in the wait for everyone. Obviously, there's a, tailgating is raised to an, a super high level during this event. Yep. Listen, I want I want to thank you guys too. I mean, I've been listening to you back when you were on that other radio station, yeah. Yeah. and uh, montage does. Is a great job for this event. Yes, no, they're I mean, awesome. It's, it's, it's my favorite day of the year. Oh, and it's, wow! What's wild everything. about it, Matt, is is I don't know how many hours you guys spent, you know, putting this thing together. But like you, you, you put all that work together for a thirty second run down the hill. Like maybe your sled makes it all the way down. Maybe it doesn't. So like. You know, I, we can't thank you enough for, for all the efforts that you and your team and everybody and all their teams put together for, you know, 30 seconds of glory. Yeah. Uh, well, it's great. I mean, even even that it does get uh, crushed up in the trash <laughs> truck, it's kind of awesome. Yes. Yeah. 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 No, that's you the know, charm. It's, it's kind of the whole whole event, you know? Like, yeah. yeah. Yep, we're done with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Next year. Yep. Yeah. All right, Matt, thanks again, man, and congratulations on your win. Pre- Appreciate it, guys. You got Have it, bud. All right, we'll see Bye. you. Wow, it was it was so impressive. Everybody was just chattering about that. Uh, I want to go to is this uh, is that Sammy Vile on the line? No disassemble. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, man? I'm awesome, dude. What a great freaking weekend! It, oh. it was so much fun. You guys, you and the sled, you did the the Johnny Five Los Locos sled. It was, yeah. it was great. <laughs> it was really, really well done. Yeah. Oh, thank you. So, I mean, I'm I'm bummed it didn't make it all the way down the hill, but we got further than our Jello Man sled last year, so I'll take it. Yeah. Um, it was, dude. It was. Oh my god, I had so much fun making this thing. First of all, I, w- I just want to give a shout out to um. Our, uh, our buddy Colin Estep of Albright Electric, who let us use his um, garage to build this thing. And unfortunately, he couldn't make it, which was a bummer. Oh. Uh, well, you know, it, yeah. you, it, you're, it, first off, it was very tall, A. It B, tall. it yeah. made the run. And C, it did something that a lot of them can't do. When you were taking it off and re- and removing it from the run, it stayed intact even then. So we were really surprised yeah. about that. We we for sure we were going to die. Yeah, it was <laughs> it was structurally sound. And I, that yeah. was the one looking at him like that one's going to crumble. But it didn't just because of its height and yeah. the the thin yeah. nature of uh, Johnny's torso. I thought that it wouldn't hold, but that thing was solid construction. Yeah, I mean, it was we the only time we had it completely together was that morning and we're like all right it's, it's, it's now or never yeah. and, and it's yeah well what a tribute man just yeah. like johnny five himself yeah. a survivor oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and well, thanks for the true. song too man the song's great yep. yeah oh yeah for, yeah man i had fun doing that too you guys you guys rule and you inspired me to make silly videos so. <laughs> i love it man it was great having you there you and your brother both we appreciate you guys being a part of it again oh uh, for sure uh yeah. give give the team our best all right sammy I will. All right. All right. Next Sammy Vile, Johnny yeah. Pepp, you got to see this thing. <laughs> yeah. You, you've, the, the videos and the pictures at PrestonandSteve.com uh, say it all. Uh, yeah. I mean, again, what? look at the level of craftsmanship. This is like what you would see on a Broadway stage or you'd go to like a, a Universal or something and see something like this. This stuff is pretty incredible. Uh, I'm going to go next to, this is uh, Devin. Hey, Devin, good morning. Good morning, guys. How you doing, Devin? Uh, I'm good. How are you guys? Good. All right. So it says here you were on one of the we had we had two different swing set sleds. Which one were I you on? on? Both. You were on, on both. both. <laughs> I, so <laughs> this this one a, a recap. Uh, this is my second <laughs> hardware classic. I was a young mom. I never had the chance to come up. Finally got the chance to come up. Clutch has been building for you guys. I yep. think really since the beginning. Yeah. So I went to high school with his wife Lisa. So so this year I was like, we're going up. We're going to go down. Lisa made, I think, 150-something jello shots, right? <laughs> so when we were going up for the second sled, which was the Tito's, I think it won top prize. I don't know if you guys got to that yet. But anyway, yes. I rode down on that sled, and when it was being pushed to the hill, I said, oh, dear God, this is too flimsy. Something is going to happen. Mm-mm. Thank God I had jello shots in my pocket, so I did one going down the hill. <laughs> and <laughs> luckily, his I don't know if you guys remember, but the, the, the swing tipped to the left, and everybody on that side fell off. Yeah. That was mostly his family and his kids. <laughs> he survived. <laughs> he survived on the right side. So, so was it? There was the one you were on. Also, so you're on both of them. The one stayed intact with the the swinging. 
the, the, fully intact. Well, he didn't swing on that one because there was like 30 people or something on yeah, it. Yeah. But he swung on that second one, and he was centimeters, centimeters from my head. <laughs> oh, my oh. God. But oh it was God. so he, impressive. It was, it was so impressive. And I think he usually tries to go down or use his sleds when they're in motion. Yep. Yes. Um, and, and I have to say, it was the most incredible experience. I've never been to Jack Frost. The montage is amazing. Yeah, you guys do such a great job, Kathy. I was so happy to see you there. I didn't get to say hello. <laughs> Casey, I got to see you at the top of the mountain. That's I was so right. Happy. <laughs> oh, excellent. I miss you, friend. Uh, yes, and, and by absolutely. the way, uh, Devin, that was uh, that was clutch swinging on it, right? That was clutch swinging on it. Yeah, you know he's he's known for his red and black lumberjack pants. I love so it. So whenever you see those, you know that's clutch. The video is fantastic. We're watching <laughs> it, it as I we speak. I sent Nick actually a video live of me going down on the first sled. <laughs> um, so hopefully he can. Yeah. That by the way, to anyone who was there, and we mm-hmm. we put the uh, the Thanks, clarion Devin. call out to anyone You're who has welcome. any footage or any pictures, please send it to us. Right, I'll Marissa? do. And yeah. Marissa has a wealth of stuff. I mean, her and, and Kyle have. Yeah. So, I mean, listen, we had all of our individual uh, photos and videos. We had drone footage. Uh, that hope- drone was so cool. It really was awesome. The dude was, I'm impressed you, you turned to me halfway through or maybe even earlier and you go, I just like watching the drone. Yeah, it was cool <laughs> watching that thing zip up and yeah. down. And also, somebody kept handing them uh, selfie sticks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with cameras, I don't know if that was montage that was doing that or not. Maybe they were because yeah. uh, there there's a video of the um, uh, that they put together, and in that video, there's the crew with that uh, Corona <laughs> uh, sled, which they were great. By yeah, the way. yeah, yeah, and yeah. It's yeah. awesome, and you could tell they were holding a, a selfie stick. Uh, by the way, yes, uh, Tito's handmade vodka swing. Uh, they won the uh, the best Tito's uh, sled with they won thousand bucks and it says Lisa Huber was the team captain. But uh, I guess that's Clutch's wife, maybe. All right. And then for our fastest winner, th- this guy was great, John Rose. Uh, made it in eleven point eight three seconds. He won five hundred bucks. He came out of left field. Yeah. Our favorite fail was a sled called Hookers and Blows Save oh, Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yes. they just crumbled at the top. <laughs> and their team captain was uh, Cindy Richmond. There were a lot of great fails. Like we had to we had to kick around which one we liked uh, most. And then uh, Pierre had a pick. Uh, it was uh, Pierre's pick was uh, the uh, old school record shop, which was terrific. Yeah, I yeah. mean, really done up like an old school record shop yep. with albums and everything. Yeah, yep. and so I mean, the sleds were all so great that like uh, Mr. Peanut sled, the uh, the Barbie that didn't even place in the top three. I know. And what's I think um, the the attention to detail on the interior of that sled oh, uh, maybe mm-hmm. went. Uh, it went unnoticed. Unnoticed. But unnoticed. Stop and think about it. For the, for the Blues Brothers, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. For, for, for that, in, inside the car, as you pointed out, Preston, there were subtle movie references yeah. inside the vehicle that no one would see. Yeah. I got a video of the uh, the women who were on the Barbie sled. They were just walking in a row past <laughs> where we were standing. And I mean, all of them in just the brightest <laughs> pink outfits, like nothing, no other color on them, but bright pink. Mr. They looked Peanut, so good. He made a great Ken, by the way. He, he was, did. Yeah, yeah. It, and he was fired up, man. It was uh, it was something else. So, Mike, you, you killed it. It was excellent. Uh, let me go. We, we're running out of time here. Uh, I'm going to go to Noah. Hi, Noah. Good morning. By myself, I'll take you physically. Exactly. Yeah. I'll take you physically <laughs> Noah, and sexually. Are you the Schwarbomber? Yes, sir. Oh, my God. Wow. So Noah, Get away from me. Noah was out there helping us out all day long yeah. At, yeah. at the top. You may not know this, but uh, he was wearing just the uh, the Phillies overalls, and Noah's a, a jacked-up dude. <laughs> and rode the, I'm too modest to ever say that. Uh, but you rode down in the fastest category on your own, right? Yes, sir. That was a pretty badass run you had. Yeah, it was, it was lucky. I was one of the last-minute picks, so yep. I built the sled in about four days. All right. And then, and, uh, but did, have you seen the picture of you at the bottom of the hill flexing? I did. I'm pretty sure that was my 15 minutes of fame. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, though, you got past you got past a lot of the mats. So the down, you cleared them all. Yep, it was a uh, it was a fun time. I had zero confidence in my sled, but it made it down. So I was pretty. Not a few. That's a win all the way around. Then at the top, he was tipping us uh, push all I can those, see, yeah, yeah. Uh, all, all those sleds, which I very much appreciate it because we don't have a real team up there. No, it's, it's something else we should talk about. We need to I, talk about that. I, I talked to the Santa 
Uh, <laughs> next year. All right, our guys. <laughs> did you did you make a weekend out of it while you were there? And that's your traffic on 93.3 WMMR. All right, thanks, Kath. Uh, we've been fortunate enough to have uh, this next guest in our studio on a number of occasions. He's got a couple of gigs coming up, one in our immediate area, one just outside, but still might be some people who would want to either take a trip or listening in the area. Uh, he's going to be performing at the Hall at Live in Hanover, Maryland on Thursday. And then on Friday, uh, he will be at Live Casino and Hotel. That show is at 7 p.m. And you can get ticks at, ticks at AXS.com. Please welcome the one and only Marlon Wayne. Yeah. Yeah. What's up, y'all? Yo, nice to see you again, Marlon. How you been Great these days? Great to see y'all. I don't know. Y'all got too many cameras and videos <laughs> and monitors. It's like I'm, I'm in the, I'm, I, like someone tapped me into the international space station. <laughs> it's the ISS right now. Uh, but yeah, we, we, you know, you got, you know, well, you know, you know better than anyone. You're very motivated. You're very, very multimedia. You're always on. You doing as much as you can possibly do. That's what we're trying to do as well. You guys are getting rich. I see it. <laughs> uh, y'all, y'all looking different. Your morning face is different. Your, your coffee different. He got a tan. Why you got a tan and you in Philly? You've been in the Bahamas. <laughs> I know what's going on. Y'all playing. Y'all playing really happy white music. <laughs> what are we fighting for? <laughs> that just that just made me feel good. You know what I mean? That's yeah. a cool, you, good you, song. You, you're being very positive. I love the the good grief tour. I love the concept. I was uh, reading an interview with you, and you were talking about. You had so like some some ungodly number of people in your life who had passed away, and and you came up with this concept of the of the of the good grief. Explain what you mean by that. Mm. Well, there's bad grief, in which you cry all day, you hurt all the time, you never get over it. You uh, you, you 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 start drinking, you start getting bloated, and then your silly self wind up drinking yourself to death. That's bad grief. Good grief is when you really celebrate the lives that you had, the experiences that you had, and extract all the funny from whatever pain that is left behind from mm. any experience. Because uh, everything is here for laughs and smiles. And there's a way to to grieve and your life actually improves afterward. So Good Grief is a, a hilarious special about dealing with the death of uh, 57 people I love and including my parents. Yeah. So this is the hardest stuff I've ever been through. And it's my funniest special because I just think like when you could take your pain and go, here's what's funny about it. Man, it's it's a special thing. Yeah, wow. absolutely. It's a, it's a positive way. Wow. Look, you've been on, on for a while. We've talked to you. Uh, last time we talked to you, you've been on sort of this journey of, uh, I know you've gotten into really good shape for for this uh, this new role, this uh, movie Goat. Uh, and just, but you're you're tending to everything, and um, yeah, it, it's uh, would you? I mean, obviously, you know, the, people like to say I'm at my best. Would you say you're at, you're at the best you've ever been right now? I mean, just mentally and physically. Um, it depends. Like I'm I'm in probably the best physical shape I've been in in years. Like I had a dad bod, and I, <laughs> my my dad bod was so bad. It was an uncle bod, a dad bod. It was any older black man bod. Like it was Denzel Equalizer Five. Ah, <laughs> wow! Wow! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, it, it, but I, it's coming together. And mentally, I know you have to lock in. And this role, I'm really happy. I'm doing this role in this Jordan Peele movie where I play the greatest quarterback of, uh, ever because it's allowing me to. I jumped into this pool to find this dark character. I jumped into this murky pool, and what I saw was I saw me across floating up, like on my face, just floating there. And I was like, oh my god, I need to. All the damage I've been through in the last three, four years. I need to go resuscitate that guy wow. and bring him to his best version of himself. Wow. So I'm there. Wow. I'm probably not the best in bed right now because I'm a lot better when I'm drunk. Oh my, God. <laughs> my drunk sex and my high sex when I can't feel it no more, it's amazing. <laughs> so this is just very, very quick but poignant. Okay. All right. I wanted to ask, you know, you mentioned losing your parents and and uh, this whole ability to be able to to extract <laughs> the good from, the, from uh, the grief that you're feeling. Did some of that come from them? Did, did Were you... It, did they guide you in, in having that type of an outlook? Um, uh, my mother, my mother and my father, they were actually very good about my dad, especially because he's Joe witness. 
and they prepare for death every day. They're yeah. Like, <laughs> they they can't they can't wait to die. They're like, "Oh my god, you got this hurt this place you're at, this thing, I don't care where you live, Vegas, Los Angeles, Miami. It hasn't it's nowhere close to heaven." Yeah. And so <laughs> my dad always prepared me. My dad told me something dope. My dad said, "If I ever pass and you want to find me, I'm always in that book right there." And he pointed to his Bible. And say, anytime you want to find me, I'm in that book. Wow. So so whenever I miss my dad, I pick up the Bible. My mother, she said, oh, forget that. I'm in every book. Uh, so when, <laughs> whenever I find my, my mother, I pick up Green Eggs and Ham, uh, the Bible. <laughs> it doesn't matter what I pick up, uh, she's in it. It's, it's interesting because Keenan, your 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 brother, and and you've talked about this a number of times. It was was kind of it kind of paternal in a way, and 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 you were describing how uh, Keenan sort of indoctrinated you into all the stuff we love, like Kentucky Fried Movie, and he he kind of held like a like a Keenan comedy film school. Explain what he did to kind of guide you guys in your comedic sensibilities. Keenan was like. Yoda, if he was black, tall, <laughs> and didn't wear underwear as in the 80s. <laughs> he, um, <laughs> he, he didn't talk backwards. He, he, um, he didn't, he didn't guide us since he was like, he'd have us come out to California when we were like 10. And it was the 80s. So I remember he, he, was, he was, he would go to a club and it'd be me, my nephew Craig, my nephew Damien, and my brother Sean. And he'd be, like putting his draw his pants on because they didn't wear drawers in the eighty because everybody was getting laid. And he was gonna go to a club and he'd be like, he'd tell us, all right, I'm going out. I'll be back in a little while. Here's some movies. He had a Betamax. <laughs> he said, I want you to watch these movies. And he'd give us Kentucky Fried movie. Yeah. Uh and he'd go or, or airplane and he'd be like, Okay, I want you to tell me why you like this movie and what you thought was funny. And what you thought wasn't funny. And then he would leave and he'd go to a club. And then he'd come back from the club a few hours later and he'd leave us with some snacks. He'd come back a few hours later and he had a pretty girl with him, or we used to call, I have a squally dip, as they <laughs> called it in the 80s. And squally dip. He, would, he would ask us, okay, what'd you like? And we'd tell him what we liked and what was funny and what we didn't like. And he goes, okay, now I want you to watch it again and I want you to tell me how you would make it funnier wow. and what they should have did right. And then he'd go in the bedroom with the girl and, and we'd hear his waterbed splish. <laughs> oh my God. So you can imagine what he was doing with no underwear on. Uh. And then in the morning, <laughs> he'd cook us breakfast uh. and the girl would leave after he made up breakfast, and he would, and we'd answer, tell him what we thought was funny, how we could make it funnier. And he did this over the course of like four or five years. Wow. Meanwhile, he would send us the script to I'm Gonna Get You Sucker. When Robert Townsend did uh, Robert Townsend's Partners in Crime, yeah. we'd be on the set. We'd be in those sketches. We'd be in, you can look and find 12 year old, 15 year old Marlon Wayans in sketches in Robert Townsend's. Uh, 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 partners in crime. I've been uh, Eddie Murphy came to my house when I was eight. Wow. Like, bro, I, I was destined to do this. Yeah, destined. but but but, yeah. In, but instead of just sort of sort of tacitly yeah. saying, okay, well, just the exposure is going to be enough. He was kind of running a school. We all like I. I talk about how the, the, the for me the comedy school was Lo the Looney Tunes cartoons, the Bugs Bunny and all that stuff early on. And yes, then, and and That's I mean, true. right, so, right, you too. And so to have someone, my my dad was the the one who would say, well, "Check this out, watch this." Man, how cool that he was doing that because all you all you guys, your comedic sensibilities are so sharp and so well rounded. Um, and uh, so, uh, what, because he, we grew up, yeah, watching this, like we grew up in a time. You understand? Looney Tunes. That was funny. They <laughs> knock you upside the head with a hammer. It was violent. It was edgy. It was somewhat racist. It was like it, it, they had characters. They did voices. They talked about pop culture. They talked about politics. They were brilliant comedians. Yeah. Nowadays, they have these the 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 sweetie tunes or <laughs> they got sweetie pie and Tweety Bird ain't trying to Put um, acne gun pellets in the <laughs> <laughs> what kind of sweet stuff is this? And then they wonder why everybody is all sensitive 
Man, they got to bring those mean ass cartoons <laughs> back. And then we used to watch me and my brother Sean. We grew up watching the Honeymooners. Yeah, we watch I Love Lucy. We watch classics in our I, Abbott and Costello, Three Stooges, where they beat each other with hammers and sl- <laughs> people forget violence is funny if you do it right. right? Yeah, you know. Uh, yeah, because it takes the it takes the pain out of the violence, and you just see how silly you look when you're violent. Yeah, you know it's funny because I was well aware of of Max Sennett and and the Three Stooges and W. C. Fields, and that was predated yes. me by by you know decades. But yet I was um, my dad sort of checked this out, checked this out. It's important to do that. Um, so so with with you now, and I, this is this cracks me up. I was reading um, that Sean, you refer to Sean as um, Harvey Corman. Why do you refer? Yeah. Why do you refer? To, and I think Preston's going to get a kick out of this because we're fans of the Carol Burnett show, yeah. massive fans. Because if you ever watched Carol Burnett, one of the gems of Carol Burnett was Tim Conway. Mm-hmm. Tim Conway and Harvey Corman were a great buddy team. And what was great was as much as the audience would laugh at what Tim Conway was doing. If you watch, all Tim Conway cared about was making Harvey Corman laugh <laughs> yeah. and break character. You're right. Because he knew if right. this committed actor who was in this ske- this scene with me, if he breaks, then I know I'm doing something really funny. Yeah. And my brother Sean was Harvey Corman. He would break. <laughs> if I was doing something real funny, watch White Chicks. Watch Wayne's Brothers. There's always a scene. I do something crazy and Sean goes, <laughs> <laughs> in White Chicks, we was doing the one scene inside the convenience store, and you could see him. We was playing the two uh, uh, Cuban uh, bodega owners, and I get up and I go poker, and I grab a candle, I go hair school, and I get up on the counter, and Sean bites down on his cigar, <laughs> and you just see him go. <laughs> so I just, I see was my gauge. I used to love making uh, Sean laugh, and whenever I made him laugh, I knew I knew the audience was gonna laugh that much harder. I love that. Wow. So, so when you, when you do a movie, when you've written a script, like uh, you know any of, of any of the ones that you've done, and you're on set, obviously in a comedy, you want to have that 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 joy and that that laughter. But you know, how do you walk that line between okay, now we got to get this done. You know, uh, you know, is it is that a tough line to walk? Nah, you're a professional, man. You know, like, look, we try not to break. You know, you try not to, but this, you know, sometimes you keep the magic and you cut around it. That's what we used to do. We, we, we like, if if it's magic, it's magic. Leave it, and we'll just get a close up so we could cut around it. Uh, but if you need to break, break. But look, it is business. But man, it's a great business when you're having fun. And I think to any kid, I would tell them, do what you love. If you love it, you'll never work a day in your life. And as hard as this industry is, I spend 12 hours, sometimes 14 hours a day working. If you don't love your job, you're going to have an unhappy life. So I I love it. Yeah, yeah. And so being around Jordan Peele, uh, what what is the status of of GOAT right now? Is it uh, filming, done filming? Haven't haven't started? I'm just, I haven't started yet. I started because I'm... I'm in the gym finding my abs. Uh, <laughs> they're coming together. Right now, it looks like the Soul Train scramble board. You see, like you can see them. <laughs> you put, you right put the lower ab and the lower ab. And the, yeah, they all are, one is in my chest. It, it's weird. You're trying to get it on meat, right? Yeah. <laughs> I want to, yeah, try to get them in order. Oh it's my coming. God, I haven't heard the Soul Train scramble board. Where. God, I used to friggin' love Soul Train, man. Oh that was God. Soul Train would come at the I, end of Saturday morning cartoons. You bet oh your yeah. ass, right? I used to watch Soul Train, but before Soul Train, I used to watch American Bandstand. Yeah. Yep. So I could see these goofy white folks mess up black dances. <laughs> and then I go to Soul Train and be like, man, we got some rhythm on us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Are you, are you a horror fan? Are you a horror movie fan? Obviously, I think you obviously you would with, with the movies you've done, the comedic parodies. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I think in order to parody anything, in order to, mockery is the greatest form of flattery. Yeah. So if we ever made fun of you, it's because we loved you, because we love what you did. Like, so we did Scary Movie and Scary Movie 2 yeah. um, and uh, uh, A Haunted House and A Haunted House 2. And I, I, we, we've always been fans of horror. The thing about horror is it's so scary that innately we just go, what's funny about it? Yeah. yeah. Because I don't want to be scared. 
Mm-hmm. So that's me rescuing me from fear. It's going, what's funny about this? Yeah. Now, we've done this our whole lives. Is is Goat going to be a horror film or is it? Uh... Yo, this is a psychological horror thriller. Okay. Wow. And no jokes. Yeah. This, this one, this is dark, this dark Marlin. Well, let me tell you, you, you you're, you're a hell of an actor. Yeah. Uh, I finally got to see respe- respect. Um, and, uh, um, yeah, you're, you're, you're damn good. I mean, obviously we've seen another stuff that's dramatic before, but, um, it, when you, when you, since you're past that stage, you have to say, okay, I can show people that I can do this, this side of me. How, how do you, besides going to the gym to get your, uh, your abdominal muscles to congregate, how do you, uh, how do you, what's the difference? What's the dichotomy? Or is it exactly the same preparing for comedic role as a dramatic role? Everything is, um, everything is shifting energy. Okay. Same skill set, just mm-hmm. shifting energy. It's, the, it's like when you, the great thing about comedy Right, me being on a stage every every weekend, it allows me to live in vulner vulnerability. Comedians are the most vulnerable people ever. The best ones really sit on stage. For me, stage is therapy. Sometimes I'll cry. I don't cry in real life, but I'll cry on the stage. Mm. And so with with drama, I don't have to worry about making people laugh. I can just tap in to my emotions. In comedy, you go, something painful happens as a comedian, you go, all right, what's funny about this? And you don't process the pain because you're too busy rescuing yourself from the pain by going, what's funny about this? And then you lock away those actual emotions. When you do a drama, you get to tap in to those emotions. And now you have to deal. Now you have to deal with that pain that you put aside. And man, it's it's beautiful and it's, it's powerful. And it's all shifted energy. It's like the way Steph Curry could be a great basketball player and in, an insanely good golfer. Same skill set. I'm just applying a, a different discipline. It's interesting because it's always been said that that people who are comedically adroit uh, can end up or tend to be able to do drama very effectively. And it's probably because of what you're saying. Yes, but, but you're going to stop with these SAT words. You got <laughs> uh, adroit? SAT words. And uh, then you uh, said something about the abs being in sync, but you, you gave a really a SAT word. What, what, what you reading, man? Yeah, you, you, I don't you, know. You got one a day dictionary where you learn a new word. I, I, These are smart I, words. I, I have a subscription to Highlights Magazine, so I get uh, yeah. <laughs> Adroit. I got to use that. No, Adroit, that's going to get me laid. <laughs> you just got to get a waterbed. You being very adroit today. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, by the way, Marlon's going to be playing. He's got a gig on Thursday in Hanover, uh, Maryland at uh, Live there. And then uh, he's going to be at Live Casino uh, in Philly on Friday night, 7 o'clock, uh, one show. Tickets at AXS.com. Is this, um, are you touring? Are you hitting, or are you just doing uh, select dates here and there? I'm, I'm, I'm this just doing big... select date. Okay. S- select dates here and there. Uh, it's not good grief. Okay. I got a brand new hour. I fit, I filmed Gr- Gr- Grief. It's coming out in, uh, on Amazon uh, in June. And so um, I, I, this is a brand new set. After I filmed it, um, Good Grief, I filmed at 11-11. I always make it as a point to the next, after I film a special, the next week I want to go and do a brand new hour of the next set I'm going to work on. So and that's what I did. And I got a really beautiful hour. It's really funny. It's a it's a hell of a journey, and I, I can't wait for y'all to see it. How do you and, uh, how do you parse your time? I mean, you're doing. I mean, uh, listen, uh, we're all in some aspect of of the the uh, of entertainment. You know, we're on the, the low end of the totem pole, but you're 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 doing you're doing so much. Uh, are you a structured person by nature, or you just make it work somehow? I make it work somehow. Okay, there's no structure. Like. My days, it depends on, like, once I, the most structure I had was when I started getting ready ready for GOAT because I wake up in the morning, I go for a walk, I meditate. After I meditate, I I, I, I go work out for two hours. I, after I work out two hours, I, you know, I, I, I write. Like, now I have, I, I work, I, at the end of the day, I, I will do another uh, um, a uh, half hour walk. You know, I, I, I do yoga. Now I have somewhat of a structure, but um, I, I keep myself uh, just just limber because I don't know 
because I travel all the time. Like I'm going to be in Maryland and I'm going to be in, in Philly the next day. And so I, I, I just, but I'm I'll be damned if I don't work out two hours a day. Cause yeah. I got to get these abs. I got to, <laughs> I got to find these adroit, adroit abs. <laughs> <laughs> do you just usually end up at like the, the hotel gym or do you, do you find a place that they, they scout you, you know, you're, you know, management it depends on how bad, how bad them gyms are. Sometimes the gyms is for like old people. Like mm -hmm. it's, it looked like um, <laughs> it's like my parents would work out there. Yeah. I like going to a gym. I like to see some weights. I like to. I need. I need some runway. So yeah. I need a, 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 a what you call it, like a sprint on. I need an assault bike. So I will go to the local gym gym and um, I, wherever I gotta go, man. For right now, I'm I'm just locked in. Well, the, the, wherever I gotta go, yeah. I look younger than I've looked in years. Like my my, I haven't had a drink. My I, I wake up feeling good. I, I don't I don't I don't have no sugar in my body. I feel great. Yeah. Wow. You look I great. I only find my abs. <laughs> Is, did I leave one in Philly? <laughs> <laughs> you come pick it up when you get here. Uh you know you Hold talk for me. you talk about hotel gyms my my uh you know my friend who's uh he he has a gym that's a, a real a, a real gym and uh the truth of the matter and not that they're not but hotel gyms are sort of calibrated to make you on vacation feel like you're getting, you know, like a, a workout. Like it's that, you can tell it's sort of like, yeah, it, you know, it, it's, you're on vacation, so it's not, so I, I understand what you're saying about why. It's just to say you did it. Just to yeah. say. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. The, exactly. The gym is, is like, man, I got these three machines. Do what you can <laughs> and then go have a Mai Tai. Yeah. <laughs> exactly Nobody's right. judging you. That's exactly right. Yeah. You're on vacation. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You did one. Yeah. You found, you look, you found one of your abs. Yeah. <laughs> get, get out of here. <laughs> well, listen, Marlon, we love it when you come to town. Just reminding everybody, take Tickets are on sale now, uh, live casino and hotel. 7 o'clock is the show, and you can get them at AXS.com. Yeah, and we'll keep an eye out for, for GOAT. Come, yeah. When that's coming around, Thank please you. swing back with us, and let's talk about that, because I want to hear, you know, uh, how everything uh, went. I, my favorite Philly show, I promise I'll definitely be there. Excellent. Uh, love you. Thank you, Marlon. We appreciate yeah, it. I love you, too. Have a good one. Marlon Williams, hand guys. Over, hand over Maryland. Uh, Thursday. Thursday. Thursday night. Thursday. Thursday. Yep, yes, you got it, Come man. on through. All Thank right. you guys so much. We'll see you, man. Take care. Wow, Yay. that's cool. I like Love his him, outlook. Man. I like that idea of good grief. I, I think that's really cool, although he's on to a new, uh, you know, uh, hour that he's got. This is going to debut. Uh, the special he did, and he's got the new hour, obviously. But, I mean, he just has he always tons of stuff, man. I'm like, yeah. I, I, I sit back and I go, man, what a... What a deadbeat I am. <laughs> he's just a naturally funny guy, too. Yeah, he's just yeah. really easy to talk to every time we've had him by him here. It's awesome. Uh, real quick, do you guys mind if I read an email? This is from a uh, a person who won a trip from us. Ooh. And I love hearing these emails uh, because when we hear, you know, what a great time they've had, it's just, it, it's great to feel yes. that. And then to know that you can possibly win something like this. And this one... Uh, was a little bit, uh, it took a while for them to get this taken care of, but this is from Phil um, Patelmo, and he said, Morning, Presbo. Uh, I wanted to reach out to you and your fine crew and say a quick thank you. I was the first winner of the Universal Orlando trip that you gave away last March. It took me almost a year to take my wife Annette, but we just got back on Sunday, and wow, what a trip. Uh, they said we loved all the rides, especially the Velocicoaster. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. He said it freaking kicked my ass and Hagrid's <laughs> motorbike ride. Uh, you guys are awesome, and so is Universal. Special shout out to my kids, Christian and Ava, who let us go without them. Ha ha. Uh, so Gadzooks from uh, Phil uh, Patelmo, who is from uh, Maple Glen, PA. And, of course, we went, you know, roughly a year ago uh, in, in a couple of weeks to spring training and then we went to universal and uh did a show and spent a couple days you know riding the rides and stuff like it was, that it was oh man so fantastic it was the best and i got and i saw this story this morning it's funny that that email came across and then i saw this story this morning uh this is from uh, the, the mirror in uh, the uk it says hagrid's magical creatures motorbike adventure in universal studios florida is causing some riders to have full-on panic attacks. Really? Uh, oh. Yeah. So one uh, commenter wrote on Instagram, this ride is so intense, 
I had a panic attack coming off, vomited, and was held in the medical facility for like five hours. It was fun, though, but never again, they said. No. And another said, I almost passed out when the whole ride dropped down to another dimension <laughs> uh-huh. like my soul was above me. Because it does this pretty wild yeah. thing where it switches tracks uh, below you, and you've never experienced something quite like that. It is. So it's so intense that people, some people are having panic attacks on it. I, you know what? So I would I would think that you'd be more likely to, to have a physical reaction to the Velocicoaster. Yep. But this has... When this gets going, I remember the first time I wrote it, um, you know, and I just went on for like four times in a row because it was like just amazing. Yeah. And any coaster fan, when they can, you know, jazz it up with things like the, uh, you know, the, the the track that you're on falling down to a track below and yeah. all of the, the various Harry Potter isms that are contained throughout the thing, it's just amazing. Yeah, it would stop and there were these little like vignette yeah, things yeah, that you yeah. would go through and it would slow down and then then it would speed back up again and shoot you down the track and then eventually end up falling through the floor, which was pretty wild. And if you're sitting up on the actual motorcycle, yeah. you do get that impression. You do get yeah. that feeling because you're really not, you're just sitting on that. You're not locked in. Yeah, but the Velocicoaster... <laughs> That was Dude, something else. I want to go on that right now. Right now? Yeah, we're looking so at the video fun. of the uh, Hagrid's ride, yeah. yeah. In case we... I'll never forget when we did that first run on the uh, Velocity Coaster. We just impulsively high five. Like, yeah! yeah! Like, we did it. <laughs> yeah. We yeah. did it! <laughs> when you guys re- uh, rode it a second time, I was like, mm-mm, I'm out. I did it once. It was fun, but yeah. I was like, I don't need to do it again. I love it because it was smooth, right? Like It was are, smooth. Yeah. Um, it was just... Like, I got off and almost felt a little like I needed to, like, hold on to a rail. Well, the thing with it, Kathy, is that, and I think this is the big sell on it, you are actually catching air for a, for a couple of the the uh, the turns on, on the Velocicoaster, Ooh. and that's what makes it so cool. Yeah. Yeah, and there's an extended upside-down <laughs> ride part of it that was pretty damn cool, too. So, But that was, uh, that was part of last year's adventure. Yes. This year's adventure for spring training uh, puts us uh, the next day right down the street. We're going to be Cow Cows. Cow Cows. <laughs> and for you, Kathy, it's going to be Extreme Margaritas. Uh, well, I think well, I'm going to start with mimosas. Okay. Steve, and then I will probably switch over about 11 a.m. to okay. Margaritas. Because yeah. you're, you're, you're professional. We'll take that into the night. <laughs> Do you like orange crushes? Because that's apparently their. Uh, that's I will, their specialty. I'll definitely give it a try. Yeah, I think a skinny crush. A it skinny will be your crush, vibe. Like yeah, it. that's what it is. It's, so, it's without the soda or it's pretty much just like the orange juice, the vodka, and a little bit of soda. There's got to be a virgin version of that, right? Yeah. It's a sweet drink. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay. Just yeah, it's called orange juice. juice. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's a, uh, <laughs> a slur- an orange Slurpee, I guess. Or an orange Slurpee. Is that yeah. all it is? Okay. Right, right. It also uh, be like watermelon and oh. all these other flavors, too. So you can uh, you can join us for the whole thing if you have the opportunity. If you're if you're headed to Florida for uh, any type of spring break activity. Is it, would it technically be spring yeah, break? Yeah. 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 Right. Right. Yeah. yeah, right. Easter. Yeah. That's around the, uh, yeah, coming up on Easter, absolutely. Yeah. I think my son's on spring break next week. Okay. Yeah. They they stagger them purposefully, right? I mean, with the, the schools. They do. So, yeah. like, my, my kids, I don't know if they do it purposefully or not, but mine, uh, my kids, I told you, they go Wednesday to Wednesday, which is really weird. I never really have understood that around Easter, the Easter break. Because so. that's when, I think that's when Jesus went on spring break. On a Wednesday? Yeah. 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 Must have been. So, but uh, anyhow, that's uh, that's our next big adventure. So, stoked about that. Uh, by the way, if, uh, Nick is not here today. Uh, Nick had a uh, family thing that uh, he had to attend. He had to leave right after Cardboard Classic, our live broadcast. Yes. Uh, but he, I think, is going to be back uh, tomorrow. Come but on. he's he's one of the main organizers of this whole spring training thing, uh, which we have, we're we leaving a week from Wednesday. Wednesday. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is it really? So after, after the show on Wednesday, we're leaving. Oh, God, I got to get home and pack. <laughs> <laughs> and then... Uh, not too soon after, and then I'm heading down to Dallas. Oh, you are? When well, you, are you, yeah. Over spring break? Uh, the week before Easter, yeah. Okay. So, so yeah, for my uh, my dad's service. Yeah. Lots of traveling has been involved uh, as of late, and, uh, yeah, we're not slowing down, friends. All right, I want to go ahead and uh, take a break and come back in a moment because we have some Bizarre File stories that we will get to in just a moment or two. Uh, Word of the Week Prize, if you haven't heard about that yet, we will tell you when we get back, so hang out. On 93.3 WMMR. Uh, Marissa pulled up the uh, definitions of oh, okay. uh, showers and rain here. So, this should clear it up. Uh, showers. <laughs> 
It's participation uh, characterized by the suddenness in which it starts and stops, as well as by rapid changes in intensity. Rain or snow, precipitation in general is relatively continuous and uniform in intensity. So some showers could be heavier than rain, mm-hmm. but not I'd last. Out of shower. <laughs> But not as consistent. <laughs> but not as consistent. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. So all he did was get out of the shower. Yeah. I just got out of the shower. All I did was get out of the shower. <laughs> <laughs> I miss that guy. He's great. Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> all right. So anyhow, difference between showers. Oh, uh, I know there was an email I wanted to read real quick, guys. Uh, I, I thought this was so cool. I got this a couple of weeks ago. And I didn't get a chance to mention it was from uh, listener Ron uh, Red, uh, Redakanu, I guess is how you know, Um, And he says, uh, gentlemen, I promise this is not fake. And I didn't put it there either, I swear. He said, I am a podiatrist working in the Galloway, Atlantic City area of New Jersey. I live in Cherry Hill and I listen to WMMR on the way to work and back every day. Been listening to the morning show for many years. And I actually called him when you guys were talking about older guys getting into skateboarding, spoke to Casey Boyer on air. Super cool. He said, in any case, I'm involved in a nonprofit that travels to Offa, Nigeria every year on a medical mission. This year was the first I was involved. And we just uh, we were just there last month. And on my way back home at Murchalala, uh, Mur- uh, I'm sorry, Murtal- Murtala, Mohammed International Airport in Lagos, Nigeria, in the men's bathroom of Terminal D, downstairs from the main terminal, I saw, and he took a picture of it. All right. A WMMR <laughs> Rocks sticker. What? On the mirror. What? He said, I thought I was hallucinating because of how tired I was, so I took a picture of it and attached it. Crazy. <laughs> uh, and he left his number here. Maybe that's why I never read this on the air, because I thought, well, maybe we should reach out to him, and I set it aside in a typical Preston fashion. It just got tossed on the pile. What, uh, what uh, era... Uh, bumper or a current sticker, one. A current one. Yeah, it's not like an old wow. classic MMR sticker. It's uh, it's one of the the MMR rocks stickers. But this is at the uh, Murtala Mohammed International Airport in Lagos, Nigeria, in the men's bathroom of Terminal D. That's crazy. Somebody put a WMMR sticker. What was the other thing that was that was similar to this? It, was it? The the old um, calendar shot of you, Marissa, and Kathy in a in a pub somewhere. Yes, oh, so in London. It's in London. So it turns out that that place is a it's a Philly based oh, bar. Oh, yeah. right. in London, they have a lot of Philadelphia stuff. And there's a, a picture that uh, our friend Celeste took a photo of uh, Kathy and Marissa together, and that's hanging up in their in their bar. It's in called Passyunk Avenue. Um, a lot of people went there when the Eagles played, so I'm sure it'll be hype when the Phillies play there next month or in June rather. Um, we tried to broadcast from there, but I think it's, like, pretty far out of the center of town. That was my understanding, yeah. 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 So I just thought that was really, really that cool. That is cool. In uh, Nigeria, that that's sitting there. So I'll try to find that picture and uh, send it over to you guys. All right, I have some bizarre file stories. We're going to get to those now. No. Bizarre. WMMR presents bizarre. Kristen and Steve's Bizarre, bizarre File. Uh, it's brought to you by Monster Mania 58 this weekend in Cherry Hill and with Sam Raimi, Katie Segal, John Cleese, and more. Uh, tickets are on sale now at monstermania.net. A naked woman went on a mini rampage in Los Angeles this week attacking folks at Venice Beach, but another lady was equally ready to throw down and with medieval weapons as well. <laughs> I love this. Uh, the incident was captured Monday by witnesses in broad daylight with a woman who was butt naked going berserk on the boardwalk near the beach. Uh, the nudist squared up with another gal who just happened to have a spiked club. So the woman swung the bat at her rival who retreated as she defended herself. They went back and forth for a bit. The other lady then struck the naked woman with the baton before throwing it at her. So the nude women, woman then picked that up and started coming at the other woman, uh, as well as other people threatening with the club. Well, the wow. fully clothed woman then retrieved a second baton, and they squared off and had a battle on the pavement. It's crazy. Oh, I saw this fight. I was wondering what was going on. Uh, witnesses, witnesses to the insane altercation, uh, they said that it uh, carried on for about six minutes without any police response. 
And some others were accosted and threatened in the mix as well while this was happening. Yeah, there's a big spike sitting out of this, uh, uh, jutting out of this baton. Yeah. That and she's swinging around. There's no word on how this all ended. The video wraps. I'm sure they became the best of friends. We didn't get any kind of uh, restitution from that, but nonetheless, it one, happened. One became Guinevere. Venice Beach. Oh, my God. That place is wild. It Venice is. Beach is really, really wild. Yep. A strip club patron was smacked in the face with a stack of cash by a female worker who explained to arresting officers that, quote, this is a place where money is thrown everywhere. Hawkins is up! Mm. Uh, police were summoned late Tuesday night to body talk uh, to investigate <laughs> an alleged battery on a male customer. The victim, John McKelvey, told cops that he was ta- talking to several employees of the establishment about his career and acknowledged that the women were upset that he had not provided them with any tips. The 24-year-old McKelvey, apparently ignorant... Mercedes, should I get into crypto? Apparently ignorant of strip joint etiquette, said that he did not see any signs stating that it was mandatory to tip. Uh, The employees were upset that the victim had not thrown money at them, which was a common practice at the establishment. What if you're not going there specifically for the nudity, but more for the career advice? A friend of McKelvey (laughs) told police that he was drunk and had been uh, talking about having a lot of money and not wanting to provide a tip, which apparently led to a confrontation with Victoria Jones. Uh, Jones told sheriff's deputies that McKelvey was drunk and being rude and had been Following employees from table to table, verbally insulting them, Jones, cops said, uh, said she picked up a small stack of money and threw it towards the victim who was struck in the face with the illegal tender. She claimed the cash was tossed in a non-aggressive manner, adding that this is a place where money's thrown everywhere. But McKelvey's friend told investigators that he observed Jones take the money and slap the victim with it. Uh, the club's surveillance cameras recorded Jones and McKelvey exchanging words before Jones hit the man with the cash and followed up with an open hand strike. Uh, so they arrested the stripper for battery. Yeah, judging by this picture, this is not your uh, top flight establishment. Well, it's like your standard day stripper to me, yeah, so yeah. I don't know what time of day it was, <laughs> so we'll see. In Oklahoma, Deer Creek School District released a statement after a video showed students licking toes during an event for the school's wonderful week of fundraising. Now the mandatory sword fighting doesn't seem so weird, does it? And an anonymous student said, it was surprising. I didn't think that they were going to do all of that. I (laughs) I was just shocked. I didn't really have uh, like a feeling. It was kind of, I was kind of disgusted and then kind of glad that I wasn't over there. Uh, The week was spent raising money for Not Your Average Joe Coffee, which employs people with intellectual, developmental, and physical disabilities. The district said on Thursday, uh, the school hosted an assembly called Cash of Classes for students to pay to attend. Kathy, would you be down with this? Uh, I don't know about this. Uh, Students in 9th through 12th grades volunteered to participate in different class competitions. I mean, Uh, Deer Creek School noted that every student who participated signed up for games ahead of time and that no Deer Creek faculty or staff participated during the assembly. Uh, the district also says students were paired up with corresponding grade levels for the competition where students were seen in the video licking toes. No. By the way, the district said that they raised during the week $152,830. Wow. Wow. Well, then all's forgiven. Uh, the parents said it's really great that they raised a lot of money. I feel like maybe they could have done a little bit more accountability and ownership in that <laughs> statement for, hey, you know, maybe we didn't fully think this thing through here. So Maybe it's time to revisit that butthole stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Man. Uh, this is messed up. A man struggling to swallow headed to the hospital for answers, and the doctors told him that he had an octopus lodged in his esophagus. Wow. Wow. Are you serious? The (laughs) heavy creature was clogging up his throat, and they made the shocking discovery after the 55-year-old was admitted to Tan Tok Seng Hospital in Singapore. So, oh, was he like at a a wet market or something, or...? No, he he was eating it. I mean, uh, so he he paid a visit after eating a meal that included the eight-limbed animal, and it soon became clear what the problem was. Now, what it doesn't say in this story... Is it the thing was live or dead or yes. raw or cooked? Uh, the unnamed patients told them that he started vomiting immediately after eating the meal. Uh, health experts carried out a uh, computed tomography scan on the patient, revealing a hyperdense mass in his Dude, windpipe. This thing is huge. Uh, the osteogapho, uh, the os- 
Osteophagogastrodudinoscopy was performed. Dudinoscopy. <laughs> on the patient uh, showing the octopus complete with its sucker stuck about five centimeters from the uh, gastroesophageal junction. However, the medical team's initial attempts at extracting the creature were unsuccessful. Eventually, the endoscope was carefully maneuvered past the mass into the stomach at, and retroflexed. Wow. Uh, doctors then used forceps to grasp the head of the octopus to extract it. Uh, the patient recovered quickly from the procedure and was discharged two days later. I would have put a tire pump in his ass. Uh, medics said that uh, food blockages are one of the most common problems that they encounter in their work at the hospital. Isn't that messed up looking? Ooh, the thing is quite Ooh. huge. Wow. Yeah. All right. And there you go. That is all we have in today's bizarre file for you. Uh, we are going to give away a Word of the Week prize this week. That includes the following. A four-pack of tickets to see Cage the Elephant. Special guest Young the Giant on September 6th. And a four-pack of tickets to see Kings of Leon with special guest Fantagram September 23rd. And both of those shows will be at The Man. Uh, tickets for Cage the Elephant go on sale this Friday at 10 a.m. Uh, the Kings of Leon show is already on sale. So make sure you listen up for the letter of the day, which is coming up towards the end of the program. We're getting close to it. And we'll give that away on Friday once we make a word. We'll be back in just a moment. Lesson question, trash, music news. Those things are coming up. Preston and Steve. Yeah. Pro Jam 93.3 WMMR. It's alive. It's alive. It's alive. Uh, seven minutes after 10, Monday morning in the Preston and Steve Show post cardboard classic WMMR.com uh, for a sneak peek. At some of the photos and videos and things like that, there's uh, more comprehensive stuff coming as we speak. Take, there's a lot of footage covered that day, and it's going to take a while. Kyle's going to get to work on it, and uh, we'll be presenting it in various forms, I believe. Yeah, I'm impressed with what's already up social media-wise. Yeah, yep. so hopefully uh, you were part of it. If not, there's <laughs> always next year. All right, we'll plan for next year. We're going to montage our new home. We love it there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yep. All right, today's lesson question. We are going to give away a pair of tickets to see Marlon Wayans, who we just spoke to, and it's Friday at the Event Center at Live Casino, uh, of course, in Philadelphia. So, uh, you know what? I, I don't normally, Nick has the question. Oh, oh. I totally forgot to. So, I don't know. Did you jot anything down, Marissa? I have been writing them down all day. Just Ask forgot to whatever give you like. them to you. Yeah. Um, which gang did Steve run with? <laughs> <laughs> All right, 215-263-WMMR. Which gang did Steve run with? Yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. All right, 215-263-WMMR. That was mentioned at one point today. I don't remember at all. <laughs> Let's see if you, that's why you're better than we are. We'll do the trash while you're calling in. The trash business is a gold mine. 93.3 WMMR with Preston and Steve's Hollywood Trash. Brought to you this morning by Live Casino and Hotel Philadelphia. Live Casino presents comedian Marlon Wayans. March 8th, tickets on sale. LiveCasinoPhilly.com. That is this Friday, by the way. Uh, what's going on this morning, Steve? Well, Rihanna receiving over $10 million to play a private party for the son of an Indian industrialist worth $150 billion. Even more impressive, the son received a fudgy the whale made out of whale. Wow. wow. Oh, right. my God. Kanye West's exhibitionist wife, Bianca Sensori, turning heads in Paris on Saturday night, but this time it was because she was fully buttoned up in a conservative outfit. Sensori told the paparazzi that she has finally run out of ways to look like a whore. <laughs> And finally, fashion icon Iris Atbill, famous for her quirky outfits and unique looks, has died at the age of 102. In her final interview, Atbell screamed a lot and claimed a sock was trying to kill her. No. <laughs> she was out and about, like, not that long ago. For she being was? that age? Yeah, yeah like, amazing, out right? speaking and, yeah. What does she look like? She had the big glasses? The big, yeah. huge glasses. She was yeah. always very, um, her outfits were loud. She was sure. loud. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wow. I, I thought she passed away a little while ago. No. So, yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. All right. Let's see if... Uh, someone knows the answer to this question. What gang did Steve used to run with? Oh, I remember now. 215-263-WMMR. <laughs> we'll go to Timmy, see if he knows the answer. Hey, Timmy, good morning. Good morning, it. Good morning to see you, Timmy. All right, what was the gang Steve used to run with? Uh, Pink Lady. The Pink yeah! Lady. You're right. All right, Timmy, hang on. 
Lucky you. Got yourself some tickets to see Marlon Wayans Friday at the Event Center at Live Casino and Hotel Philadelphia. It's a 21 and over event. Tickets are on sale now via livecasinophilly.com. Now, Preston and Steve's Music News on 93.3 WMMR. Prepare to be Russian-fied. Brought to you by Imaginary from Lionsgate Films. A woman returns to her childhood home to discover that the imaginary friend she left behind is very real and unhappy that she abandoned him in theaters March 8th. So over the weekend, you 2 closed out their residency at Sphere in Las Vegas uh, with their 40th concert there. Uh, they became the first band to play there last year, and fans got to enjoy the shows with its 16K resolution wraparound screen, which is the largest LED screen in the world. Yeah, they chose wisely going with you 2 to kick yeah. that all off. Mm -hmm. A few quick facts about the Vegas shows for you 2 The planning and production took roughly 18 months to prepare, and the stage was created in the shape of a record player. Uh, Sphere has 1,586 permanently installed speakers, and U2 still added more. So for each concert, they were heard through a total of 1,886 speakers. It's amazing. Yeah. Every show was sold out. Uh, and since they opened in September, they played a total to a total of 661,456 fans. So who's following now? It's Sphere. Yeah, uh, I, don't, I don't know about Fish Resident. there in a month. Of course, Richard Marks. <laughs> Fish uh, and then Grateful Dead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know about residencies and what oh, they'll yeah, do maybe, after yeah. that. So. Yeah, it may not be residencies. Right? Yeah. Right. How many do you have to do in order for it to be considered a residency? I think that label is kind of up for grabs. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, but I, I would think I've heard them as short as a week. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If you're doing like five or six shows yeah. in a week, that can be considered a, a one-week residency. Residency, yeah. Yep. Uh, new masks are in the works for Slipknot's upcoming 25th anniversary tour. Over the weekend, the band's vocalist, Corey Taylor, shared an image on Instagram of what appears to be himself in the process of getting a face mold. Yeah, he, uh, he's going to be Bert, and the other guy the other is going to be Ernie. <laughs> oh, okay. No, it's Ert and Bernie. Ert and Bernie. <laughs> and I'm so glad you said that, Preston, because I so badly want to make a T-shirt of Ert and Bernie, Ert and Bernie. Or, or Bernie and Ert, and all it is is just their colors are different. So yeah, okay. all right. Ert, Ert would be <laughs> yellow, and, and Bernie, Bernie would, would be yeah. Well, no, I guess it would see. Uh, all right, uh, wait. It I wouldn't matter. Way. It really wouldn't matter. It Either really way, would. it would work. <laughs> yeah, you just had the the conical shake head. Uh -huh. Shaped head, more brown. Yes. And uh -huh. the more rounded yeah, yeah, out yeah, one yeah. being yellow. Uh, right? I, I, you got. You've Let's got do it. Our Ert and Bernie. I love that story. <laughs> you you were in front of us. The, the I was at the Sixers. The and Sixers. I, you're doing in arena announcing. <laughs> and how did it go again? Correct. Sesame Street Live was there, and I think the characters may have even been there. And I yeah, it was introducing uh, Bert and Ernie, and I said. Ert and Bernie, and then I was like, "No, wait, Bernie and Ert," yes. and I switched it, and I just, and, and like I couldn't get you it. Get I stuck. Could, you got stuck. I got stuck, oh and God. I couldn't yeah. get it. And I was like, I think I just moved on, and was oh. like, whatever. I ran into that. I was describing a sled on Friday, and I, I was like, I cannot say the words that need to be said. And you know, and I do the same thing with our dog's food. Uh, it's called moist and meaty, and sometimes I'll say meast and moody. <laughs> That was a vaudeville yeah, act. Yeah, yeah. Meast and Moiti. Meast and Moiti. Yeah. I, I love Ert. <laughs> Ert. Ert. It's a name. Uh, Ert. Ert. Uh, so as far as Slipknot goes, uh, there's no word yet on if the masks will carry a throwback to the group's original days. But uh, from what fans have been posting, uh, that's what they are expecting. Uh, the 25th anniversary cycle emerges just days after the band recruited ex-Sepultura drummer uh, Eloy Casagrande to join them. Bruce Springsteen will release a best of collection spanning his 50 year co recording career. Uh, covers music beginning in 1973 with greetings from Asbury Park, New Jersey through 2020's Letter to You. I'm a big fan of the early Bruce stuff. Uh, best of Bruce Springsteen, an 18 track set, will be available on April 19th. Also, there will be a digital deluxe version with 31 songs on that. Fair for Music Show. Uh, along with the E Street Band, Bruce will kick off a 51-date tour March 19th in Phoenix. 
Uh, he is going to be in our area at Citizens Bank Park, August uh, 21st and 23rd. Those are the make good The make shows. good dates, yeah. He had uh, his, his little medical issue there. Yeah, yeah. And then one final thing. 50 years after its release, Deep Purple dropped an official video for Smoke on the Water. Wow, all that time. Yeah, the six-minute remix of the song by Dweezil Zappa is showcased in an animated clip that's mixed with classic footage of the band. Now, I haven't seen it yet. I haven't heard it. I, I, if it's a remix of the song, I assume it's the uh, original recording, but they... Ah, <laughs> uh, now I hear it. <laughs> we do. Yeah. Oh, missed the note at the end. You heard little, that? Yeah. You're a little pitchy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a little okay. pitchy. Okay. For those who may not know, that was done with a uh, an air compressor and Casey's butt cheeks. Yes, we had, to, we had to a little. We had to moisten them, I think, in order we to did. get that. But he didn't. He wasn't able to play it like no, that. No. He, he did it the one time that, and somebody edited it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you were a little sharp on that yeah. last yeah. one. Yeah. A little nice. pitchy. I had right. never played the air gun before. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, the song, by the way, reached number two on Cashbox and number four on Billboard. I don't even know what Cashbox was. Was that a, a, a chart? Some stupid thing. It um, had to have been a chart back in the day. So it is. It is. Ago. It is often cited as the most iconic riff. Our riff, yeah. Riff, yeah, right? Yep. Uh, and in 2017, it was inducted into the Grammy Hall of Fame. Uh, Deep Purple will be releasing a super deluxe edition of their album, Machine Head, on March 29th. The three CD collection includes Smoke on the Water. And that's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yes, we know. We know. Uh, that is the last uh, story I have in music news for you. So why don't we take a break, come back in a second, and we will wrap up the program and get our letter of the day for the word of the week. We'll be right back. Stay with us. New music from Disturbed, and the song is called Don't Tell Me, and the female voice on there is none other than Anne Wilson. That's pretty cool. Of heart fame. Yeah, absolutely. I'll have to give that uh, another listen, but it sounds very dramatic and big. It is 1028 on this Monday morning with the Preston and Steve show. Weather-wise, mild again. Uh, high, like 65 degrees. It was. It got up to that at least yesterday. It's gorgeous. So comfortable. Went out, took a little walk at the park. And nice. Don't... Enjoyed the day, and yeah, but unfortunately, we don't get the sunshine that we had yesterday. Uh, today, it's going to be cloudy, and then the rain starts later on this evening, and then we've got on and off rain for the next few days. <sighs> and then the whores come out. And that's when the whores <laughs> come in. <laughs> uh, but nonetheless, uh, it's it's going to be all good. Uh, temperatures are going to remain uh, fairly mild. I would like to thank our one and only guest, Mr. Marlon Wayans. Yay! He was great. He was terrific. Every time we have him on, he is fantastic. And you can see him live at the event center at live casino on friday uh tickets are on sale now it's a 7 p.m show and he's just a super positive nice funny guy so we're happy to have him on uh, the program this morning pierre robert is here with us and uh, how you doing man right, thank you wonderful what a uh, cardboard classic huh yes, yes. Mm -hmm. wow uh there's a great picture bill kane took mm -hmm. some wonderful shots of uh, of you, on, was it you on the Barbie sled, Preston? Yeah, it was the very last one. And you have your arm raised triumphantly into the sky uh, as the sled actually made it down. Yes, it uh, it kind of, the front end fell off of it, and so <laughs> it afforded me a chance to just step right out of it and stand up high and and raise my fist like, up. And Casey's in the same shot as well, <laughs> but it was. Uh, yeah, it was something else, man. Yeah, it was a lovely day, though. Yeah. Um, you know, that plus, uh, you know, the whole day was perfectly, you know, lovely weather, great crowd, great location. This place is perfect montage. Oh, my God. Yeah. Hey, what time did so uh, Ed Rowland stop by? He stopped by, let's see, they came on at 5. 
I was on till three. He was on between two thirty and three. Okay. And okay. He brought cool. us a brand new song called "Mother's Love." It was never played anywhere. We had a genuine world premiere. Oh, that's awesome. From the forthcoming uh, Collective Soul album, which comes in, um, I think, two or three weeks now. So uh, I'll play that again today. But but how cool of him to come by. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I was hoping he could have seen some of the sleds and some of the activity. He that said was he going actually on. did see some. Okay. Of oh, good. Uh, right, good. Yeah, he, he, he had some funny southern phrases <laughs> for for that. But uh, he said, what are those fools doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, it was a great day all the way it around. It really was. Without question. All right, shall we do the letter yes. then? Yes, and all Casey, right. you have something that'll help me with the letter that okay. Pancake okay. just sent over. Okay. Perfect, here we go. Preston and Steve on 93.3 WMMR. Now, the Daily Letter. All right, and the Preston and Steve show is brought to you today by the letter T as in... Stand by. T as, as in. in. I, I don't have it. T as in. Ticky. I don't know. No. Tenacious D? Yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. We have Tenacious okay. D. Is me. This is them doing uh, their cover of uh, One More Time from Britney Spears. And it starts with a T, so. Yeah, there you go. Tenacious D. What was it supposed to be? Supposed to be Takiki Wakaku. Oh, Taika uh, Watiti. And, uh, and the, the piece didn't come over, which is ah. part for my asinine course. <laughs> All right, by the way, I'm sure we'll have it up before the show's over. Yeah. And it's uh, the prize we have four pack of tickets to see Cage the Elephant, special guest Young the Giant, and Baker uh, September 6th. And a four pack of tickets to see Kings of Lamb, Leon, with special guest Fantagram September 23rd. Both shows are at the man. KG Elephants uh, tickets go on sale this Friday at 10 a.m. Uh, and uh, uh, Kings of Leon tickets, yes, they are available now at Ticketmaster. All are available at Ticketmaster, so make sure you get those tickets if you don't win them from us. But we'll give it away on Friday. Uh, what's happening today then, man? Uh, we'll have Workforce Blocks of Bon Jovi. John's birthday was Saturday. Coldplay, Chris's birthday was Saturday. And Rolling Stones. Excellent. All right, I want to thank our sponsors. Preston and Steve Show is brought to you today. By Duncan, the President's Tea Show runs on Duncan. Also brought to you by Acme Markets, Fresh Foods, Local Flavors, and by Monster Mania 58. Tickets are on sale now at monstermania.net. Uh, tomorrow on our program at Tuesday, so we'll ink somebody up with a Preston and Steve show tattoo. And uh, our friend actor Dan Roebuck will be checking in, and we'll see what else we can get into tomorrow. Oh, and we have this little clip to play. Taika Waititi. <laughs> oh, now it comes. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, Jackie Bam Bam. Uh -huh. Taika. Sing. How do you Just say play it? Play it one more time. How do you actually say his name? It, Taika Watiti. Taika Watiti. Taika Watiti. <laughs> Taika Watiti. Thank you. Very well done. Thank you, Pierre. <laughs> All right, that's it. We're done. Rage on. Have a great day. See you tomorrow, friend. Bye bye.